Dun 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 da 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 da. Where am I? Oh, I'm over here. <laughs> so welcome to another getting projects done with me, Chris. And uh, basically, we're done with sculpting. I think for the moment, uh, I have all my parts all ready to go. You can see here that I have. Um, Really, it's only about four elements, right, of sculpting. The helmet, I'm not too worried about at the moment. Uh, we'll get to that uh, probably when we're closer to finishing the figure. Otherwise, yeah, everything's ready to go. Everything needs a little layer of primer. Uh, I already scrubbed up uh, when I had done the uh, skull and I had adjusted the eye sockets. I've already given this a quick scrub down and, you know, and everything cured just fine. You can see all the previous work we had done. It, it's blended in almost seamlessly. Not quite, but it's okay. <clears throat> of course, we have our symbols ready to go. Guns cleaned. All, all the parts are cleaned. It is time to start painting. It's time. It is time. So, for that, I'm going to get things started with some Steinal Res Gray. What is it? Gray? Yeah, it's just gray primer. This is the four ounce bottle they sell. Um, sometimes I, I left them on their sides, so that's why it seems like the, the color runs that way. But I've been shaking this for like the last few minutes. These bottles are just a little bit big for my uh, my paint mixer. I don't like, they don't recommend anything over, I think a full ounce or two ounces or something like that. Whereas this is a four ounce bottle and this has still got quite a bit of primer in it. And I've had this for a while, so yeah. but. So far, I mean, I have been enjoying Stano Res. Uh, I used to use Vallejo Surface Primer, which worked very, very well, other than uh, the black, the regular black. Uh, I just found that that, you know, I don't know, it just, there was issues, and it would, like, it would peel, it would fall, whatever. There was problems. There was issues with it. It wasn't perfect. There were issues with it. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to use Stano Res. Uh, plus two, I'm in North America. Uh, Badger is a, an American company, so this stuff is like all over the place. I know there's there's many different kinds of primers out there, even using like the rattle can rustoleum stuff. Sure, you could use that. Why not? Nothing wrong with that. And for the painting of this figure, we are not going to use uh, any water-based acrylics. I'm going to use uh, Tamiya acrylics for this, like we had done with the Sister of Battle. Uh, but I don't think I live streamed any of that process. I think that was just entirely within filmed videos. So here you're going to see basically long form. Unedited. And of course now I'm getting hiccups. Because I'm trying to talk and drink my coffee at the same time. So yeah, we're going to get to some airbrushing. We're going to lay out some of this uh, primer onto everything. And now here's the other problem I've, I've come up with is that all of these parts are heavy as hell. They're all pretty darn heavy. Even this little gun has got some decent weight to it. And I'm not sure like, like how I'm going to hang on to these as I'm working on them. I mean like, you know, here, I mean like the torso, sure we can hang on to the little pins because these will get obscured once the, the figure is back into position you know the arm sure we can hang on to that part because all of this will be obscured but you know, some of the other stuff I mean like like the feet I guess we could hang on to it like that right because nobody's going to really see inside here I suppose I don't know these things are heavy though like this one leg like it's got some weight to it good god Good God. I kind of like the idea of having them standing kind of uh, pigeon-toed. You don't really see space rings with pigeon toes like that. Standing like, you know, like he's got a pee or something. <laughs> Kim, hey, hey. Disco. Afternoon, afternoon, disco. Kaoma, Kim. I doing the brushwork on the McFarlane Marine. That's going to be the Blood Angel for my brother. Hoping to finish it up today, or at least up to weathering. I also mostly use Tamiya paints on the McFarlane figs. Yeah, uh, I'm. 
I mean, like, just like water based acrylics seems to work just fine on these figures. So, if you have like a bunch of you know, GW paints or you know, whatever paints you've got, you know what I mean? Like, it'll it should work fine. Um, I really don't see any issue. I just prefer the Tamiya paints just because, to my way of thinking, they're a little bit more durable than regular water based acrylics. Um, that, that's really that's the only reason because the, they're because regular Tamiya paints are they're solvent based acrylic paint they're not water based acrylic they have alcohols in them and other things and stuff like that um, and in in my way of thinking they're closer to more like enamel based paints and enamel based paints are durable as hell and if you don't think enamel based paints are durable think about the paint that's on your car and your car is sitting out in the rain snow hail sandstorm whatever and that paint hangs on pretty damn well right so that's my way of thinking about it it's an action figure i'm more than likely going to be playing with it like you know posing it not playing with it like hey, hey, hey. you know i might do that too but but anyway yeah so that is the plan everything that was green stuffed has already been washed and scrubbed up i did not wash the other parts uh we'll see if that backfires on me <laughs> it's a bold strategy i realize it's a bold strategy all right we got the prime well we got the primer ready we got my airbrush ready i'm gonna use a patriot 105 to uh lay the color down so we'll see disco can you apply uh enamel paint smoothly with a brush yes yes you can uh, the Tamiya paints, yeah, Tamiya, Tamiya does an, an enamel line as well as the acrylic line. I don't think it's an acrylic enamel. I don't think so. But anyway, um, yeah, you, you can you can hand brush enamel paints. There, there's an artist. Um, he's somewhat local. I think he's over in Hamilton. And he, he paints with humbrals. And he blends, like wet on wet blends with the humbrals. And I like to to my way of thinking, man. That like that's that's crazy, because anybody who's ever played with any enamel paints knows that that stuff dries fast, right? It dries fast. And same with the Tamiya paints. Uh, it dries very very quickly and to a very durable finish. So, yeah, that's that's my only reason for using these kind of paints on these figures is because they're gonna get handled. They're gonna get bumped around. I'm gonna be posing with them and you know um, doing figure uh, pictures and you know stuff like that. That's the plan anyway. And yeah, so that's why. That's the only reason. I mean, I'm sure water-based acrylic paints will sit on it just fine as well. And I'm sure you know under a layer of varnish, it will um, be just as durable as. So you know, it's pick your poison kind of thing. You know, it's. I don't really feel, I mean like in certain situations I'm sure enamels and solvent based acrylics probably perform better under durability than water based acrylics I'm sure uh, who's going to test that out I have no idea that is completely speculative as far as I understand it but the way I think about it is your car is covered in enamel based paint that's what they use because it's durable Right? They don't use water-based acrylics to paint your car. There's a reason for that. Right? So, that's it. That's all. But if you if you only have water-based acrylics, by all means, you know, use it. I'm talking to the camera. I don't even have the screen up. <laughs> I just realized that. Well, because my mic is, like, blocking the view. Also, too, let me know if you guys prefer um, my mic being closer like this. Because normally I don't have my mic. I Usually my mic is on, over on the other side and I just talk. But usually whenever I talk, it's like, hi, how's it going? You know? And so, anyway. <laughs> Kim, tell me the paints are much more rubber. Uh, like when it's dry, normal acrylics are much more crisp. See, I don't find that. No, I don't find that at all. Uh, I find, to my paints, very, very durable. They have flex to them. And with uh, water-based acrylics, I find that they, they, they don't adhere as well and they're not as crisp but what are you gonna do 
I mean, if we were really concerned about it, probably we could use like a latex base, which I'm sure most water-based acrylics are in that category, which is probably why they have that slightly smelly, um, funny smell, smelly fun. So yeah. Kim, it's not enamel paints, it's alcohol-based acrylic. Well, Tamaya has alcohol-based acrylics and enamel. If you look, if you go to their online catalog, you'll see there's a, they sell enamel and they're in the same colors. It's the same color. Again, all paint is, is pigment with whatever binder, right? They take whatever pigments that everybody else uses for paints and you either add an oil base to it and it becomes oil paint. You know, uh, enamel is essentially an oil base. You have uh, alcohol based, latex, right? And they just add it to the pigment and you have your different lines of paints. But essentially it's all pigments and all it is is really the binder. So really when we're talking just about the binder of the paint you know all all we're really talking about is how well it adheres how durable it is and that's really the only characteristics we're talking about because the pigments that they use for paints are pretty much the same right they most likely have the same suppliers of pigments whatever they mine the pigments out of they go to different companies and they produce different paints you know it's really no, there's nothing there's nothing groundbreaking about that or you know yeah it, it, it's pretty simple again this is paint it's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years the process of making it has not really changed that much other than maybe synthetic pigments uh ba -da -ba 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 -ba. green leaf terrain looks like the legs need to go pee <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it'd be kind of funny right <laughs> i gotta pee Kim, I separated the hip part uh, and the bottom torso and then stuck the two torso parts together to to paint. Stuck the two torso parts together to paint. Huh? You mean these two parts? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, whatever works for you. I pulled it apart because I was pulling the figure apart. I pulled the legs off because I wanted to get into this stuff, right? Because when I did the sister of battle, I didn't put the I didn't pull those legs apart, and it was just a slight irritation to kind of get into some of those areas. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Kim, read you wrong. The Tamiya paints are much more durable than the acrylic ones, and I find that it's because of the Tamiya being more rubber-like after drying. Sure, yeah, I mean like, yeah. But you know me, I use all the brands of paint. Sure, yeah, I mean, you know. There's nothing wrong with it and you know if it helps you further understand you know the process of putting paint down you know why not right anyway let's get to work enough gum flapping uh oh what's going on what's up what's up what, what, what are you doing what are you doing I kind of prefer you didn't because it gets really fucking hot down here. Okay. Good enough. It's already, I'm already sweating for God's sakes. And it's cool out today. It's actually some nice weather around these parts. Open your window. Open your window. Maybe I will. I'll put the dryer on after I'm done. Uh, Kim, yeah, I took off the hip piece and the hip armor. Yeah. Oh, you took that, you took this, this part off. Yeah, see, I didn't really feel like monkeying with that. Yeah, because I know it, it's like a separate bit. Yeah, I didn't really feel like doing that. Um, mainly because, I mean, like, yeah, we'll probably use a brush to get into some of the space. Yeah, like, there's some of that area there. But, I mean, you know, whatever, right? It's not really a huge issue. All right, let's get to some priming. Uh, I'm going to use a Patriot 105 spring at around... Uh, I don't even know what I'm spraying at. I didn't adjust my pressure. Uh, let's do just over 20. What number is that? That's 20. Yeah. Actually, let's turn that down a bit. I find when the pressure is a little too high, it atomizes a little too much. And it creates, like, big clouds. And, yeah, I don't really care, care for that. <laughs> Great big clouds. Big clouds of paint dust. All right get to work 
I've got paper towel, got some rinse waters, uh, got all my fluids and everything like that. Yeah, we're good to go, all right? The only thing is, is that hanging on to these sons of guns, right? Like it's, I mean, like the shoulder pads, I'm sure I can use like my clips here to hang on to these bits, right? When I'm painting them, but yeah. Some of the parts are just too damn heavy. This head, can we hang on? Nah, not really. I don't know. Can we hang on to the head? Let's see if we can hang on to the head. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we can hang on to the head. So, yeah. We'll probably use our little stand just to take care of some of this stuff. Um, you know what, though? I think I'm going to grab one of my uh, latex gloves. I'll be right back. Entertain. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Be right back. So the other thing is, um, in the last couple episodes, I've been trying and failing at um, sculpting feathers. I just grabbed a, a latex glove. Just so I don't, I'm not going to have too much primer on my hands. My, my delicate, delicate hands. So anyway, um, what was I talking about? Damn, I don't remember what I was talking about now. Primers, gloves, figures. <laughs> I, can't, I initially came in with a point I was going to talk about, and now I can't remember what it was. Oh, well, couldn't have been important, right? I guess. I don't know. Anyway, let's get to work. Okay, we're going to get some of these parts out of the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah, some of these parts are just too darn heavy, so they're going to have to be primed like this. And now, um, oh, you know what? This has still got some freaking grease on it from the chapstick. I'm going to quickly Windex this. Bor boring part, but I'm using some Windex just to wipe down uh, the surface here. Uh, where's my paper? Where the hell have my paper towel? Oh, there it is. And uh, yeah, just to, because when we set this down, I don't want any of that grease transferring uh, to the uh, figure in any way, shape, or form. So I'm just wiping this surface down just to make sure I get rid of it. Oh yeah, I was talking about the feathers. That's right. And uh, failing at that. And, you know, so what do we do in, in the grips of failure? Well, you know. Um, if I'm really serious about, um, you know, doing more sculpting in the future, yeah, I should try and, and sculpt feathers again, which I may. Of course, at this scale, I mean, like, I don't do a lot in this scale, but, you know, yeah. So, I guess we'll get started with some of the big stuff, right? Let's grab some of these clips here. Get these pieces ready. Uh, big old piece, yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll start with the torso and work our way around. <clears throat> and I just clean I just cleaned this brush, re-lubed the needle. Um, yeah, so it's all it's all flowing nicely. I guess I should grab my stand too. Shit. Hold on. Uh. Oh, all right, I still have a whole bunch of parts on there. I still have uh, the uh, um, Age of Sigmar Annihilator stuff on there. Oh, well. We'll economize. We're going to have to economize because I still have these guys sitting on there. All nice and chromed up. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just rearrange. We'll do a little bit of rearranging here. I know, this is terribly boring watching Chris fiddle around with this stuff. Get these out of here. We don't need these. Range, range, there we go. Okay, so now we have a place to put our things that are on the sticks and safely put them away. Put those over there. I got a little 
cup holder for my things. Okay. Yeah, because these are just going to have to sit on the table because... Yeah. There's really no good option for this. Just because the, the pieces are just so damn heavy. So damn heavy. Uh, disco. Shiny. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know if you were. I don't know if you caught any of the um, Indastra uh, videos, but yeah, I I use the same paint. It's a chrome, Spastex chrome. Check those videos out if you want. If you want. If you don't want, well then don't. <laughs> Pretty simple. Kim. Uh, had everything in ISO for an hour before scrubbing it down. Yeah, why not? Um, just to make sure. The only thing I would be cautious of when using like something like, um, you know, other than soapy water, is um, the um, the glue of the um, you know that binds some of the parts. Like I don't know. On this figure, it's not so much, really. It's just the belt, I guess, is the only thing I would be concerned of where there's glue. Because I know that they glue one of these parts. Uh, but on the Sister of Battle, it, it, she has a few points on her that feel like there's um, there's a lot of glue. Anyway, let's move some of these parts around here just because I don't want, really want too much overspray on pieces because I don't want them getting too dusty. Actually, the arms. The arms we might be able to put on the, on the clamps. Give them the clamps. The clamps. All right. We all set. Can we see this? Actually, you know what? Let's change focus a little bit. <laughs> all this fiddling. We're fiddling. 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 Jeez. Uh, let's change focus here. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, oh, no, that is the focus. Yeah, there we go. There we go. How come we still can't see? Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm on the wrong damn window. <laughs> oh, man. You'd think Chris was prepared. Oh, shit. almost spilled the coffee. You'd think um, I'd be prepared. But I'm not. <laughs> uh, Kim, I was uh, uh, I was talking about my airbrush work. Work cleaning it. I would not put the McFarland figure in ISO for that long. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, because I was thinking that's a little extreme. Uh, I mean, like it shouldn't. Like for most of these solid parts, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, it's just the parts with my, that might have some glue in them. But like these things are pretty solid. Like this eagle, I think is a separate piece. I don't know if it plugs in or if it's glued. And I'd be concerned. Like anybody else out there, I would be concerned of, um, you know that glue letting go the beauty of this primer is it's hard to tell because it's the same damn shade as as the figure the only way I can really tell is it knocks the shine off the, the material that's the only way I can tell that this is actually uh, applying properly Try not to touch the model too much either. I keep calling it a model, but this is an action figure. This isn't a model. Uh, I'm trying to get into this little space inside here. Now this neck moves around, but I'm not. Again, I'm not too concerned about that. It's mostly going to be dark colors in there, so it shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Of course, I say shouldn't, but... A little bit of primer in here, just along these edges. I'm not too concerned with the main area inside there getting primer. Uh, I'm not really worried about that, but yeah, there we go. See? Now it kind of feels like... Same kind of material, right? It's got that, uh, still see a little bit of green here. I'm not too concerned with a little bit of green poking through, but you know, yeah. There you go. 
Does it feel like it shipped that way out of the box? No, not quite, but you know. <laughs> Here's the hoping, right? <laughs> Let's do the backpack. And we'll start on this side. really good spot to hang on to this piece but thankfully the primer cures really fast so it's just some big areas that I want to make sure are saturated with the primer but yeah again it's hard to see this the change in, in value. The only thing I'm looking for basically is there's a slight sheen. You know, you can kind of see it there. And you can see where I've cleaned it, and then you know, that's really where where I'm looking at. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Disco between my wife vacuuming and Chris's compressor. I can't hear anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The other challenge is not making sure I'm overly saturating the areas with primer. Just because, um, you know, usually with like water-based acrylics, it really becomes a problem. Um, it's going to make that surface really, really chalky. Of course, I always caution those not to over-prime their, their models. Good on primer. Yeah. Good enough. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully it's good enough. All right, let's do an arm. We'll do an arm. Dry tip. Okay, you know what? Let's see. Uh, I'm just gonna put my brush down a sec. Cause I gotta take care of that dry tip anyway. Let's see if I can grab one of my one of my arm grippy thingies. Got a little shit. As I did that, the head popped off that one. Hopefully, it doesn't happen here. Yeah, see, these things are freaking so heavy. Too heavy, man. It's too heavy. It's just too heavy. All right, we got some dry tip going on. We need to take care of. I'll just take my little scrubby toothbrush, and all I do is I just gently scrape, uh, like, kind of the sides. Not too much pressure, because you end up just, you know, bumping the needle or whatever, right?
grab another pinchy. Pinchy. <laughs> you know, the pinchies. The pinchy things. <laughs> Let's grab a pinchy thing. And there we go. Try and maintain some sort of integrity of of the finish. Oop, geez. I wonder if we can do it right inside there. Nope, not really. It's like the um, the the female end part, the socket. All right, more priming, primey prime. Come on, there we go. hard there on that one spot that's okay it'll be okay i'm sure Ugh. let's do a shoulder pad let's get these out of the way oops a little too much there We've gotten through quite a few parts here. I only filled the bowl about halfway, and we're getting through quite a bit. I'm gonna do the gun next because I'll probably have to load some more in before we get to the um, the legs. There's a tough one. I think we'll grab it by the handle because the handle's gonna get mostly obscured anyway. So. on the handle. I think that's good for that. And yeah, we're going to have to add a little bit more. Let's give it a quick little shake. Boop. 
All right. So with these legs, I'm just gonna have to hang on to them like this by the ends. I'm not too concerned about the bottoms, like the soles. I'm not concerned about their soles. Oh, I gotta take her dry tip. Dry tip. Dry tip. The ever-present danger of dry tip. All right. Bend the leg. think we need to spray the bottom but eh, let's give the bottom a spray put a little layer down if we had done this by rattle can this would be pretty darn heavy. Not that that's really a bad thing, but like normally when you were thinking about, you know, miniatures and stuff like that, like we really want to work in a lot of thin layers. But honestly, with like larger figures like this, I don't really feel like that's entirely necessary. I'm gonna give that a second to cure. Um, ba -da -ba -bum, ba -bum. It's just Zay. Hello! Wondering if that's a glass pallet you have there. Yes, it is. It's actually not really a pallet. It's just a chunk of window. Uh, it is a big piece of tempered glass. Uh, it is probably about a third of an inch thick. Uh, in millimeters, it's probably about three or four millimeters thick, but it's a big piece of tempered glass. And yeah, I only use it... Um, just because it's easier to clean and on camera I can have like this blue of it is just really a piece of um, of cardstock uh, I can make this background any color I could even have an image back here if I wanted to but otherwise yeah that's the only reason I do it is really just for camera because a lot of times uh, I, I create videos like on YouTube I do like you know tutorials and stuff like that so that's the only reason for it. It's not like this is some sort of pro move or something like that. It's it's really just for filming. It's the only reason. Because oftentimes anybody who's ever done like any um, filming, trying to film tutorials, stuff like that, anybody who's ever done that knows that the palettes typically, because they're white, throw off the uh, the camera balance. So. That's the only reason for it. It's not like this is, you know, secrets of the trade or something like that. Uh, now, I bent these legs. I probably should bend the arms. I'm going to come back to the arms here a sec. Just give the arms. <clears throat> hey, man. Now, these should be pretty much dry, but I'm going to get in, in behind the elbow joint here. There we go, like that. Let's do the other arm as well. We'll do both these arms. Put you guys over here. Oh, I should probably move you guys too out of the way. You guys are getting all sorts of overspray. But it's the priming. I'm not too concerned about, you know, overprime. Especially dealing with these Tamiya paints. Oh, dry tip. Go. 
Gotta clear the dry tip. Dry tip, dry tip. It's always about dealing with dry tip. Um, it's just Z. Is it easy to clean? That's pretty cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's the only reason for it uh, is because I film with it. Now, for anybody else out there who just does this for hobbying and, you know, stuff like that, yeah, sure. If you want to go find yourself a big piece of tempered glass to, you know, when you're painting and stuff like that, nothing wrong with it. The only thing is, is that um, if you are in a very warm environment, you know, um, very dry, your paint will dry very, very quickly on a dry palette. You should probably, if you're just, if this is just for hobbying, you should probably stick with a wet palette. But sometimes, in some instances, uh, it's better to work with a dry palette. Um, for example, I prefer working with a dry palette a lot of the times um, when I'm doing a lot of um, shade washing and mixing of shade washes, stuff like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work with my dry palette on that stuff. I prefer it. But otherwise, yeah, this, it's not like this is, it's not like, oh, he uses a piece of glass. That's got to be a pro move. Nothing, that, that, it's, that could be, nothing could be further from the truth in that regard. It's really just a camera thing. Because I produce videos, and that's it. That's the only reason for it. And of course, yes, just like uh, Disco mentions, uh, glass palette for oil paints, yes. Same reason, though. Um... You know, it's easy to clean. Oil paints, whatever. It just clears out the glass. I mean, you use the appropriate solvents to remove whatever paint. But otherwise, yeah, that, that's it. It's it's nothing major. It's not like, you know, it's not like you're missing out on anything. Uh, I do want to do a little bit more primer in these sockets here. Come on. There we go. Because these are going to be... I'm going to use a dark color in those sockets. Probably around the neck as well. Yeah, that's good. Let's do a little bit more primer here. Just because just we've got some extra primer going on, so I'm just kind of going through, just make sure I've got good layer of primer down. That's all. Am I over priming? Eh, possibly. That's a that's a very real possibility. Uh, again, though, this is such a large figure, and we're not that concerned about um, you know working in very thin layers. So that's why I'm not too concerned about laying, you know, too heavy a prime down because yeah, we're like, it's, it's not like, it's not like miniature painting, like regular miniature painting. Squeak. That's the dry tip. Dry tip. Oh, we didn't do the the grills, did we? I don't think we did. Yeah, that's how you really know you're getting a lot of dry tip going on. Is when you start hearing the uh, brush squeak as you uh, as you apply pressure or air pressure. For anybody who cares. All right, I think we are done with the prime. We're gonna give that a little bit of a break. Still have a little bit of primer left, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm just gonna dunk it. Clean my brush. Time to clean. Clean, clean. Clean, clean. Now, when dealing with primer and cleaning my brush, you can already see that there's already dried paint. And so typically what I'll do is I'll take you know, piece of paper towel, whatever, and I'll wipe the bowl and pick, try and pull some of that excess paint out before do actually doing a flush. Just because I don't want to run the risk of actual chunks of it falling further in. So it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> I, I actually am a little remiss to say what this is like, but. <laughs> but you got to do it. Right? Everybody knows you got to do it. Because you don't want to be the smelly kid, right? <laughs> uh, 
It's just Z. Learn something new every day. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, that's that's what I do, man. It's what I do. I uh, I try to inform those who uh, you know are you know relatively new to this, and you know try to uh, demystify a lot of this stuff. A lot of people, you know, give conflicting information. They're talking about the same thing, but they use different terminologies, and that messes people up all the time. All the time. All right, now I'm going to water. So I just chucked a little bit of water in, and I'm going to dunk it into my my painting cup. I'm going to grab another little chunk. Oops, almost got my coffee. <laughs> almost got my coffee. So you can see now, a lot of the paint's gone. Just flush that out. Give it another quick little wipe. And see, so far the bowl is looking pretty clean, but we're not there yet. Take some uh, window cleaner or glass cleaner, and I spritz the inside of the bowl. Usually one or two spr little tiny little spritzes will do, and then usually I'll give that a, a second to um, to sit there and help you know break up the paint. I right, also, while that's full, I'll move the trigger back so it fills this forward portion of the nozzle, and that should help break down some of the paint that is in here because invariably, invariably, there is. So I will often do this, and yeah, you can see a little bit comes falling out yeah so that's all and that just helps break it down I'll leave that for a minute or two while I talk to you guys all right um, Kim the new red grass game palette that was on Kickstarter the two the zero two edition one of the stretch goals when it ships out in October is a glass palette insert for oil paints. Yeah, I don't know why you, like, is it a wet palette or is it just a palette? Yeah, I, either way. Um, yeah, for, for oil paints, I mean, whatever palette works for you. I mean, you can use wax paper for oil paints, right? Like parchment paper. Um, you, can, you can just use that for your palette. And just stretch that over a board or whatever. You can even use a piece of cardboard. Like oil paints, it really doesn't matter. Um, or any other paints for that matter. Although, when we get into the ad, like when you're doing like canvas work and stuff like that, your palette, it's not that big a concern. That's why a lot of artist palettes who do canvas work and illustration sh and shit like that, they, their palettes and their studios just look a mess, right? And there's a reason for that because they're not too concerned with that they're more concerned with focusing on the actual artwork <laughs> but when we're talking about miniature painting yeah you kind of do want to keep your palettes and your materials clean with the paint reason being is because of the small small scale of what we're doing right and so any of those little transferences of color or if there's hair dirt dust whatever you that will become visible on the model it, you'll leave a little bump you'll have a hair sticking out you know what i mean like all these things and so you have to, you want to work actually pretty clean when uh doing miniature painting and of course this is getting primer all over the place nice 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 all right let's flush i've got an overspray cup that i flush my uh windex through just so i'm not breathing in all of the chemicals i mean most window cleaners are ammonia based so you know some people often um i know a long time ago people were very concerned about using like windex in their airbrushes because it would strip the chrome off of the brush i've had this badger airbrush this is a patriot 105 i've had this for nine years nine years and i mean as long as you take care of it it's fine i've changed the needle out the needle got dinged one time and I had to replace the needle but it's the needle I mean and there's no protective uh, cone around that needle so yeah you can end up dinging that needle but a lot of airbrushes especially when you get finer tunes type of stuff type of work yeah the needle will, will be exposed it just it, that's just uh, nature of the beast so to speak unless of course they had like a big doggy cone at the end of it which you know 
again, I don't really think is necessary because, you know, it becomes cumbersome, especially if you're trying to work in pretty darn close with your subject matter. But, I mean, yeah, it's a little dirty on the outside. You can see there's schmutz and stuff all around here. And, yeah, one time I had a problem with the threads. Uh, I had an air leak in the threads, but I just used some um, um, gasket tape. Just the one quick little wrap around with gasket tape. Screwed the piece back on. Bang. It was done, right? So, yeah. Again, I've had this brush like eight, nine years. I think it's like, I want to say it's nine years I've had this brush. And it has served me well. Ammonia and Windex. I mean, you know, they talk about it corroding the seals or it stripping the chrome off. I have not noticed that with this brush. So, you know, and I've used, I've used mineral spirits through this. I've used turpentine, um, uh, Windex, iso alcohol, up to what, 99%? What is my iso alcohol? Yeah, this is, I use 99. You can see right there, 99 iso alcohol. Uh, I use spirits. Oh, I've I used lacquer thinner. This is some aggressive stuff. If you really want to clean your brush, holy shit, use some lacquer thinner. <laughs> that'll clean that gunk right out of there don't use it on your regular paint brushes for god's sakes don't do it oh my god don't do it unless of course they're synthetic then you shortening the lifespan every time you use it but you can but i wouldn't use it for your good sable hair brushes or even like gw brushes i wouldn't do that oh you'll dry the hairs right out it just it, it your, your brush will look like the guy at the end of uh, indiana jones in the last crusade where he's he drinks from the grail and he, oh, and he immediately goes into old age yeah, that's what you'll do to your brush. You'll just immediately turn it into old age and your hairs will just be very, very brittle. It'll just dry it right out. Yeah, it's no good. Don't do it. Don't do it. For God's sakes, people, don't do Oh, shit. Did I still? Oh, I still had stuff. <laughs> I still had stuff in the nozzle. Oops. Here I am spraying this. And then oftentimes what I'll do, uh, especially when working with um, um, like acrylic colors and stuff, you see the water is still a little bit murky. And that's because there's probably residual paint and residual Windex. I often work with these glass um, eyedroppers with the little rubber ends. And uh, I use this for like paint mixing and flushing of the brush. It, I only ever use this for air, my airbrush stuff. But I'll back feed the water and I'll slosh it around and I'll move it around other sides uh, in the hopes of dislodging any particles. That's really the whole intention of this phase. But I'll do this a few times. Draw out some of that. But yeah. Then give that a flush. Almost put it in my coffee again. And yeah. Brush is clean. Ready for the next phase. And because I've been flapping my gums for a bit, hopefully this primer is dry. Uh, I'm going to chuck that. Yeah. There we go. So, brush is clean. Should be good for the next phase. Sounds good. Everything moves properly, you know. Again, I, I just cleaned the needle and um, lubed it up before uh, streaming today. So, it should be good. I, I am going to change my glove out, though. Because I am handling some of these parts. And I do not need any of this primer. Because this, this will rub off. Um, you can see, like, you can even see, like, even within my hand here. Like the paint comes off so if i was handling these parts while i was um painting like using the paints this primer would rub off on surfaces and it just ruined the look so i'm discarding that although damn it i should probably go get another one i'll be right back i must grab two just in case <laughs> talk amongst yourselves Grab an extra glove just in case. All right. So, colors we're going to use. We are going to use uh, some Tamaya. Now, I had I had a thought of using like like a brown, 
as the base and uh, basically lay it brown, build it up to like a white or a yellow and then lay clear red on top. But I think I'm probably better off just going with a pure red. Yeah, maybe if I go with a pure red and I can always shade it down with very dilute browns to create shadow values. Because I do want the armor to be of red. I don't know if I want it like Blood Angel Red, where it's a fire engine red. I, I've talked about this before, about what colors I'm using. But yeah, so let's grab some flat red from Tamaya. I will grab red brown from Tamaya. What's this one for? This is just brown. Ah, no, I don't want to play with that. I think primarily we'll work with just the reds for the moment. <clears throat> Tamaya, thankfully, does not have. Uh, a huge, huge selection of colors. The other thing I was thinking of is maybe tossing a little bit of blue. Because I'm going to use some Tamaya uh, Flat Red. This is XF7. And this is Red Brown XF64. In case anybody's wondering what colors I'm going to use. Yeah. This is probably going to predominantly be the, the red. And you can see it's kind of like this bright fire engine red. It's like a it's what I would consider the primary red. This is a primary red. This, is, this red, you can shift it up and down, but this would be about the mid-tone. You could not mix any paints together to get this value of red. This is the pure red. It's the mid-tone red. You know, the primary red, right? Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Kim, I use a cardboard piece to draw out some of the oil and transfer the oils to the glass palette to mix. This is how I do now. So since I already backed the Kickstarter way back when it started, it's nice to get one with it. Sure. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, nothing. Palettes are palettes. I mean, you know, some of us, you know, like having a whole shit ton of brushes or a bunch of paints or, you know, a bunch of models or, you know, like whatever, right? bunch of tools some of us are more gearheads than we are actual you know doing the work we you know again this is for like a vast majority of people this is a hobby and the hobby time should be your relaxing time right so yeah i get it you know i mean sure if you want to collect paints collect brushes collect palettes collect you know collect the miniatures collect whatever by all means, you know, do it. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy. Because I know there's some people out there who live very stressful lives and, you know, you need some you need some uh, relaxing time. And hopefully you find that in this. I would hope. Because if you're not, well, then you got to find another hobby. Because if this, if this shit stresses you out, <laughs> then yeah, it might be time to... Um, to find another hobby. Now, <clears throat> here's a question. Um, what color should the gun be? So this is a completely custom chapter I'm working on. So we, we can make up and use whatever color schemes we want. Now, I do want predominantly red. I have been toying with the idea of um, the helmet being a different color. Although once I incorporate uh, the final design uh, that I'm going to use on, on the, uh, the helmet. There's going to be big feathers coming off the helmet. Um, maybe one way. Kind of boop, boop, like that. I don't know. Either way. Uh, the helmet being a different color, or should it be red like the rest of the armor? I'm, I'm leaning right now 50-50 on that. Uh, the shoulder pads, the symbols are going to be white. With I don't know if the trim will be a different color. I'm thinking it might, just because typically Space Marines, the trim of the shoulder pads is a different color, just because it often denotes, um, you know, squadron, stuff like that. But I am drawing off of kind of uh, Space Wolf type of imagery and the way they do things. And I like the way Space Wolves denote their squadrons just by the, you know, the jagged patterns that are, you know, on the shoulder pad, right? And I think I'm, that's going to be in play in the field behind the icon and the icon i think is going to be white i'm pretty sure this is going to be white with red and then possibly uh, a design similar to like a space wolf type of thing 
behind the field. And of course, the other shoulder pad, which is the chapter shoulder pad, this is the chapter symbol for this, for this Marine. It's gonna be red with a white uh, symbol. The symbol's gonna be white. So, yeah. That's the plan, anyway, that's the plan. There is a plan. He does have a plan. Also the chest eagle. He's predominantly red. Now imagine the red. Okay, it's gonna be somewhat bright, but we are gonna pull it back down a bit with some browns. Again, like I said, I was initially thinking of using the brown as the base. I mean, I could mix them. Uh, but then it's a pain in the ass to try and work out how much paint I put in there. See, that's the only problem with mixing, especially with like Tamiya colors, because ta the, the Tamiya paint line is not huge like other miniature paint line paint lines, right? Paint line paint lines? Is that the right way to say that? Um, you know what I mean? Like there's like varying degrees of red in most miniature paint lines. Whereas Tamiya, it's red. I think it's like a clear red gloss red yeah i you know what i mean like they don't they, because once you have the mid it's it's kind of like a painter's paint line right if you look at any of the expert paint lines they often have a very limited color palette but they offer the brightest primary values or or secondary or tertiary colors but yeah you know they often they often have the most intense primary colors because you can always change that value in any direction you want by adding white adding black you know adding brown whatever right you can you can play around with it the world's your oyster whereas most miniature painting lines they often have varying degrees of the similar colors ready to go into bottles just to make life a little bit easier for you know everybody else out there for the less experienced right so masters pretty much can work with just uh i would guess 10 colors is it 10 right your three primaries your secondaries your tertiaries and a silver and a gold even still you wouldn't even need a gold really just a silver oh black and white you need black and white right and that's it that's all you need but i mean even your tertiary colors you, pr you that's a bit of a stretch as well because you can just mix right like the bare 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 minimum is um red blue yellow black and white and a silver that would be the bare, bare, bare bones minimum of colors you would need. Because as long as you had very strong pigmented primaries, black and whites, and then silver, you can make all the colors in the rainbow. Painting. In the traditional color wheel sense. The modern color wheel is magenta, cyan, and uh, yellow. But that's more uh, subtractive. Subtractive? Yeah, I believe that's subtractive. But anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling at this point. All right, let's get back to work. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I think, uh, 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 what if, no. No, I think I'm gonna go with the red and then I'll push it all downwards if need be with the brown. Or maybe I should just do a 50-50 mix. Use that as my base color and then build up some highlights with the flat red. Add white to it if necessary. Um, yeah. Because I can also come in with some clear colors as well. And that way, uh, the red, I can also push it down. I could use like uh, kind of like what I did on the previous uh, figure. I got a really great value out of that. Like, here, hold on. I'm going to grab the figure again. For whatever reason, these McFarlane figures don't want to stand on their own. I don't know why that is. But you can see, like, the red of her sword or her bolt gun. The bolt gun, I did a video on how I did this. And it was, I just laid the red down. But then I came in with a clear brown color and created that transition like that. So it goes to a darker red. And that's, this is pretty close to what I'm actually thinking of for the armor. And I think I did a similar thing for the sword. Where I, I went with the red. 
and then I laid a little bit of the brown, and then I came in with the clear brown, I think. God, it wasn't that long ago I did this, and <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> but that's why I filmed this shit, man. That's why I filmed this shit. So I don't have to remember. Yeah. But anyway, these figures, for whatever reason, man, they don't freaking stand that good on their own. You gotta position them in such a way, and they, like, hunch over. You know? They're hunched. It's a hunch. Anyway. Get over there. Oh, she's standing a little better this time. All right. Yeah, maybe I think I'm just going to lay the red down. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to just lay red down. I'm going to give this a quick mix, and then we're going to begin laying it down. Um, oh, right, the gun. What did you guys think about the gun? Uh, green leaf terrain. Ooh, sounds hot. Thermicus. As far as the gun, the darker gun metal and your armor color. Yeah, I'm thinking a darker color. You know what I was even thinking of? Um... For the casing, for a majority of the casing, I'm thinking of like a black on these portions or maybe dark metal. And I was thinking of copper. Because uh, traditionally copper for a lot of Native American cultures, uh, copper is a big deal. Uh, we regard copper in in higher regards than, you know, more of the minerals from Earth. Um, but yeah, I was thinking copper. Like copper around here. And then I was thinking for the uh, plasma coils. I was thinking either a yellow or a bright, bright yellow green for the coils. But yeah, that's what I was thinking for the gun. I just thought of that just now. <laughs> and the chest eagle. Again, if it's red, going to a deeper red, the chest eagle. A white? A white for the chest eagle? Possibly? Um, Thermicus, how does your tribe depict eagles and their feathers? Uh, well, what do you mean in which way? Like, how do we depict them? Like, how how are we using them in our imagery and shit like that? Uh, typically, eagle feathers are regarded highly, um, well respected, and you know, um, it is to receive an eagle feather from our elders and such is a tremendous honor just having one feather so just collecting feathers and stuff like that and you know displaying a bunch of eagle feathers if you didn't earn them then that's kind of shameful right it's it's just like it's like if i was to display a bunch of golden demons behind me that i had acquired through you know third party sites or through you know garage sales or you know what i mean like i didn't earn those awards and i'm displaying them like i earned them well that would just be you know fraudulent right it's fraudulent and so that's why you know when you see some folk uh native american displaying eagle feathers they have been given a great honor per me personally i have not i have not i have i i am in possession of no eagle feathers i have not been you know given that honor but then you know it's kind of like um it's like medals of honor right you only get them when you know you you're recognized for something right so yeah that's all and an eagle feather is highly regarded but other feathers mean other things as well it's not like it's ju just eagle feathers Turkey feathers, hawk feathers, goose feathers, duck feathers, partridge feathers. Sorry, I'm just mixing my paint right now. It's probably why I'm disappeared. You can probably hear my tooth chipper running. But yeah, that's all it is. It's, it's just a mark of honor. And so that's why sometimes <coughs> around the interwebs, you'll see people catching, sh catching flack from the Native American community for displaying the headdresses because that's that's a big cultural significance and you're displaying those feathers and you're you're prancing around and you did not earn the respect of what those symbols meant and it's not like you're you know using it a part of your own culture you're just doing it because you think it looks cool and you know again having golden demon swords and if i had a whole bunch of golden demon swords behind me 
and I made them, bought them, whatever, but didn't earn them. Well, it's false, right? And you're lying to yourself when you do that. That you really, you're only disrespecting your own self when doing that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Thermicus. Good with that for the chest eagle. Yeah, white for the chest eagle. Yeah. Kim. The Swedish artist Anders Zorn used five colors for most of his work. Yellow, ochre, uh, carmine, cyan, black, and white. Yeah. Yellow, ochre. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he was using more of a modern um, subtractive. I think, I'm pretty sure it's subtractive. When you're using cyan, magenta, yellow, I'm pretty sure that's subtractive. Because basically you're relying, when you're going with that color palette, you're mostly relying on white of your canvas to provide most of your value. It's, it's, when you're going by the cyan, magenta, yellow color wheel, you're, doing, you're going about things more like how a printer goes about things, right? Like your printer, like your desktop printer. Because that, in, in the printer ink is cyan, magenta, yellow with black, right? There's no white. There are white printers, but most of the time it's just those four colors in your printer. Why? Because white is provided by the paper. The paper gives you all your light values, right? And so that's why you can pr print photographic realism just using those four colors, right? So, yeah. Anyway. It's just Z. I voted yes on the using white. Yes, I, I concur. I think the, the chest eagle should be white with that skull being a white. I don't think I'm going to paint it like a real skull. I think I'll paint it just like white, like the wings, like it's a sculpted thing and it's, you know, it's part of their armor. Because the vibe is that they are, they have this Native American vibe to them, but it's, you know, they're still space marines. They're still part of the Imperium. They're, they're still manufacturing the armor. You know, they have artificers in there tapping out designs and, you know, all that stuff, right? So, yeah, that's the vibe. We're going to stick with that vibe. Uh, Kim, do the armor first uh, when you see what works for the Aquila. Yeah, I think white, though. Which means that if this, if the chest armor is white, I don't think I want the helmet to be white or yellow. Although I might, hard to say. Um, I think the helmet will be red. Just, you know, because. Right? Yeah. Again, this is a custom... Space Marine chapter. I'm making this up pretty much as I go. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, let's move some parts here because we don't really want a, little, a lot of overspray. I'm going to put my gun away because the gun is pretty much a separate thing. We're, I think we're going to use some metallics on there. I don't think I'll use red on the gun. I don't want to use black or a lot of black. I'm thinking copper, especially around that grill. Around the front grill of the gun. I think I want to use copper for that. And then maybe we'll do some heat heat treating on the copper. Yes. You ever see what copper looks like when it's been uh, tempered? Like, have you ever seen like a copper uh, pan or anything like that? Cookware? And it's heated up to a high degree? You get that really bright blue rainbow. And it rainbows along the edges, right? Like normal still steel and stuff like that. You see that color progression through the, through the metal. But copper, for whatever reason... It has a big space where it just changes to like a blue, but then on its edges, it does that rainbowing, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, Thermicus. Fun fact. The town Waco, Texas is named after Hot Hotcho tribe. Believe an offshoot of Comanche. Also was talking about the colors used in the pictures, but also love learning about other cultures. Yes, well, I mean, like, yeah, I'm, I'm Waco, I'm sure. I mean, there's a lot of Native American vibes, vibes, words for cities, places, counties, um, states, you know? Yeah. Again, we were talking about this a few other times, like Chicago. Chicago be, being big city, Chicago. Chicago, it's, that's an Ojibwe word. I, I'm Ojibwe, by the way, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Kim. Yeah, Zorn did not die until 1920, so pretty modern in art perspective. Yeah, well, the cyan magenta yellow thing, uh, I'm not sure when that was being first employed uh, because that, that's, that's, that's a large debate 
because uh, there's a lot of artists who feel that the cyan magenta yellow is um, is the true color wheel as opposed to the traditional color wheel for painters which is the red blue yellow but when you talk about science and light the color wheel or te like television sets and monitors right the color wheel is red blue green when talking about light right there is no yellow in that in that um in that color wheel but yeah so like traditionally yeah we use the traditional color wheel when dealing with most of our paints but yes you can use cyan magenta yellow in our painting but the red blue green color wheel that really doesn't apply that color theory does not apply because it, we're talking about light in that regards anyway <laughs> loving this copper talk <laughs> yeah i think so i think i'm gonna use copper and i have a copper in tamaya don't I? Yeah, I do. I got gold, silver, light gold, copper. Do I have a bronze? I think I have a bronze as well. Ooh, a bronze. Ooh, a bronze. Oh, I got a little excited there for a second. Bronze. What about a bronze? Or use bronze elements on this. Ooh, that might be a nice excuse, a nice excuse to do some vertigray and stuff. Ooh. <laughs> Starting to sound like uh, Macho Man. Ooh, yeah. Bronze. Anyway. <laughs> Disco, Chicago. Green onions in Native American language, I think. Uh, green, uh, Chicago, the, the pronunciation in Nishinaabe, uh, or oftentimes, oftentimes our language group is called Algonquin. Um, it's Chicago. And it, it means stinky place because Chicago is built uh, because it's basically like the mouth of like the Mississippi and it all all the waterways run in that way and it was swampy Chicago was built on a swamp it's Chicago I live in Chicagoland Thermicus went to Chicago for a Navy boot camp great city <laughs> I like Chicago yeah Chicago's a nice place I've been there many times because go to Adepticon Adepticon's fucking great love Adepticon any of you going to Adepticon anybody anybody Bueller <laughs> Chicago, Ferris Bueller. I also have a um, uh, Abe Froman shirt. <laughs> I got that actually at the Willis Tower. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, I'm grabbing my uh, Tamaya thinner. I'm gonna use some of my my Tamaya thinner. Yeah, this is a uh, X20A thinner. I like using this stuff. Uh, wait, if you're gonna use Tamaya paints, you might as well use the thinner. I also have uh, the uh, retardant. Where's my retardant? If you're gonna uh, if you're gonna work with this paint uh, and do it by brush, I highly recommend using the retardant. Where the hell is my to my? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I highly recommend using the retardant. Uh, it just helps with um, you know when you're applying this by brush. But if you're even gonna do some like um, you know glazing or feathering, wet blending stuff like that. Oh yeah, this this uh, helps with the um, the dry time of this stuff because this stuff will dry fast, like minutes. You only have a few minutes, maybe. You pretty much have to commit, like using this kind of paint, you have to commit to the brush stroke. But with with retarded, yeah, you get a little bit more time, and it doesn't give you like um, like because I've used like the Vallejo retarder on Games Workshop colors or even Vallejo colors. And you get a really good amount of working time. You get probably about 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Probably less than 10, but it feels like a long, really, really long time, especially when dealing with acrylic colors, right? And that just gives you plenty of working time to, you know, um, create a blend or, you know, smooth out a paint finish or, you know, any of these aspects, right? You know what? Maybe we'll use some of this too when we get to, to the finishing phase. I have some panel line accent color. I thought this was more of uh, an oil base, but it sounds like this is an alcohol base. Yeah. Yeah, it says do not apply onto enamel paint. 
Why would that tell you not to apply this on enamel paint? Yeah. Why? Because I most like most oil washes, well, they're oil, right? They use oil thinners and stuff like that. So, yeah. Anyway. All right, let's get to work. Fuck, enough talking. No plans yet? No. Thermicus. Houston is also built on the swamp. Also, Austin. Great city for live music and food, but the people are asshats. <laughs> That's everywhere, man. That's everywhere. I mean, there's funny people all over the place, right? All right. Slap on the glove. The glove of love. <laughs> no, we're not slapping on the glove. Glove of love. Of course. That's the scariest sound that anybody can hear, right? That sound. <laughs> Alrighty, kids. Here we go. Time for our inspection. <laughs> so everybody else, I'm sure some of you probably who are just listening to this are like, probably tensed up a little bit. Oh, oh no. It's getting weird. It's getting weird. All right. We're going to stick with the same brush. A Patriot 105. Spraying it around. Ooh, I'm going to probably turn my PSI down. Uh, let's take it down to below 20. It's probably closer to like, it's just over 15. So, yeah. Old man Logan. Hey there, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> just Z. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> that's that's how it, it gets a little weird around here at times so you know if, you, if you're relatively new I, I don't I think I've read that name before it's just Z I think I've read your name before but yeah <laughs> Kim it's enamel based and Tamaya you had there and wait it's enamel based the Tamaya you had there and they're afraid of people reactivating their paint pots paint jobs oh because of mineral spirits or the alcohol you mean with the panel liner? Yeah, it says don't apply on top of enamel paints. Why? Like, is it the alcohol in it? Because it recommends using this, and this is, like, alcohol-based. Yeah. Contains N-propanol and butyl alcohol. This is alcohol-based. <laughs> and the paint, I'm pretty sure. Because it's all flammable. Burn your house down paint with this paint. My God, man, we'll burn our houses down. All right. Enough goofing around. Um... Do I really feel like pouring this? Ugh. I always end up, usually end up making a mess if I pour. Oh, you know, I need, I need my thinner, though. So I'm going to take my little glass pipette, my little eyedropper, try and expel as much water as possible out of it. It looks dirty as hell right now, and it is, uh, but it's usually mostly on the outside uh, because I'm going to use the, the pipette and add a little bit of thinner to the thing. Oh, I need a synthetic brush. I'm going to use one of my th synthetic brushes to do a little bit of paint mixing just like that basically this is just an army painter army painter has a lot of um, uh, synthetic brushes when dealing with Tamiya paints uh, I always recommend using a synthetic brush don't use your good uh, sable brushes for this kind of work uh, just because you, you're, you're gonna end up killing your your brushes because the cleaning process it's a lot of alcohol alcohol think about your hair right when you're taking care of your sable hair brushes um, you know, you want to moisturize, keep the hair supple, right? Alcohol will dry out the hairs, right? Natural hair will dry out in alcohol. If you put alcohol in your hair, right, what does it do? It becomes very brittle, right? So don't do it. Synthetic brushes? Who cares about synthetic brushes? <laughs> I mean, they're cheap enough for the most part that you can, you know, you can end up screwing them up and it's like, oh, 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 well, and chuck it, right? So, yeah. Anywho, uh, but up, up, uh, Thermokits. Tamaya paints. It's fire. Literally. <laughs> Too low. It's just a Z. Yeah, I'm watching your stream a couple of times. You seem like uh, my kind of streamer. I enjoy watching your streams. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, my kind of streamer. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. <laughs> is the poop tech really what I think it is? <laughs> If you don't get those references, I can't help you. <laughs> anyway, let's pour a little bit in. Yeah, we're just going to pour it in. There we go. I usually don't like pouring, but, you know, whatever. 
Uh, I probably don't need that much thinner. Probably just a couple drops. Let's make sure that's screwed on tight. It's not like we need a whole lot because it's not like we want to lay this down. Um, yeah, just that much. It's only just a couple drops. Just to help. Use the brush. Oh, shit. I didn't, that's what I forgot. So I often will keep one of these clear jars uh, just to uh, rinse out when I'm playing with solvent paints. Here I'm using some iso alcohol. This is only 70%. Yeah, this is 70% alcohol. And I'm running out of hands here. And this is just for rinsing off the brushes and any tools. I also will use it when flushing uh, these, uh, these paint kind of paints through the airbrush. So yeah. Anyway, the reason why I need that is so that when I do this, I give this a little mix. I could back feed it, but that ends up often uh, splashing a lot of paint up onto the walls, and that just ends up speeding up whatever paint's in the pot and drying it. So I don't like often like doing that. Oi! Thank you. Uh, who was that? Oh, somebody on YouTube. Lucius. Lucius on YouTube followed. They're following. And I just give that a quick rinse in the water, my rinse water, and bang, see? Brush is clean. There we go, all right. Enough with the gum flapping, let's get to work. Uh, Thermicus, synthetic brushes are meant to be abused like, nope, not making that joke. Yeah, don't make that joke. Good God, man, don't make that joke. It's just Z. Uh, most streamers don't like to cuss and I cuss a lot. Yeah, well, see, and that's the thing. Um, if I was with who I used to be with, as far as, like, creating online content and stuff, yeah, I wouldn't be swearing as much. Uh, but I speak my mind, and, you know, um, I'm, not af I'm not afraid of curse words. You know? I find that people are very oftentimes uh, more honest when cursing is... Um, you know, not frowned upon. People just tend to be more honest. I should have laid a brown down first. Sorry if I'm not talking, it's because I'm, I'm concentrating. <laughs> If we now this this is a flat red, so that's why it doesn't look you know too saturated. Uh, if we had used a gloss red, this would look really really shiny. It would look very candy like. And I'm I'm not looking for that on this model. I don't want it to be you know fire engine -y, uh, or anything like that. I'm looking for flatness because again we are gonna weather this and you know. We're going to put chips on the armor, all that fun stuff. We're going to treat this like a big version of the small versions of stuff. But I am going to lay a good layer of paint down. So I do want this to be pretty durable, like I've mentioned. Right, we gotta lay some in here too. Oh man, all these places we gotta lay color down. Again, though, what I like is that this is this is pretty dry, pretty fast. See, I can touch that. Nothing happened. Oop! I think my fingernail hit that. No, that was just a piece of schmutz.
Another project that I desperately have to get back to is my Gundam as well. Maybe we'll work on that after this guy. We'll take a break from Warhammer stuff and we'll work on some Gundam. Get some Gundam going. Oh, see? See how my finger had rested on that spot? And look at how it pulled that freaking paint right there. I don't know if you can see that. You can see there's a line on my thumb and it was resting against that bit. Arg. Because it was still wet when that made contact. It's annoying. Okay, you know what? We'll, we'll pause at that there. I want to find a clean spot of glass so I can set this down. We'll finish the top of the collar. Uh, let's work on the other piece of the torso, just for giggles. Now, the ribbing will most likely be a black. Yeah, a black. But everything else will be red. Um, so we pretty much can just concentrate on just the armor segments, I guess. And this feels like it's sputtering. Which tells me, dry tip. Not too worried about laying a good saturation of red down on the interior, just because we're, that's gonna be shadowed anyway. So we're gonna lay some darker colors on top of this. This is just to kind of, you know, sketch the color out, block it in kind of thing. Dry tip. Gotta take care of the dry tip. There we go. Yeah, even with like Tamaya paints and stuff like that, just using like an old toothbrush, right? Just to knock the paint off. That's all it takes. It's not like you need something more durable or anything like that to do it. You'll be fine. I just want to lay a little bit more even red on this. Just like regular miniature painting, I like to build with the darker colors or lighter colors first and then build darker in. Just because you don't have to lay out uh, a whole whack ton of paint down. Just because let working with thick paint is often the enemy of a good paint job. Quit screwing around with that. Ugh. I'm touching paint parts of the paint job and I'm messing it up. Uh, oh, we're out of paint anyway. So we gotta add more paint because we are not done. Uh, -bum -bum. Thermicus, could you go in and recess shade the brown with the brown? Yes, yes, I could. I probably will. That's probably how I'll, I'll go about it. Uh, well, I'm gonna start with the brightest color or mostly bright color and then build some shadows downwards. And if I feel like I need some more highlights, then I'll probably build in highlights afterwards. I kind of like work middle and go down and go up. Um, just lately, it, it just seems to make more sense to me rather than starting with the darkest color and trying to build a bright color on top of it. Uh, that just ends up 
you know, being a mess. Uh, and you end up with too much, like, especially, like, say, for example, you start off with a black primer. And you, um, you want it to be yellow. Well, for God's sakes, you got to, like, build up a whole whack ton of, of layers of paint. And that's just going to obscure details. And your paint job is going to look like crap. And then you're going to be like, well, why, why did it look like crap? Is it because I'm crap? And it's like, no, it's because you didn't, you didn't start off from the good start point, which is if you're going to have it bright, you start off with white. If you're going to have it dark, well, then you can, you can start off with black, but you know, it just, it just makes life easier. You want to be, when you were painting, we want to be more efficient with our time, you know? don't want to be you know spending too much time wrestling with the colors you want to see your vision forward right <coughs> all right um you know let's do one of the arms i guess we could do one of these arms next i'm just gonna like keep moving around so yeah go um uh, Old man Logan, reading between the lines. Yes, it is because you're crap. <laughs> no, not at all. reposition your arm once this layer dries not too concerned with getting you know a flat red on the shoulder pad just because it's obviously obscured by when we put the big shoulder pad back in Yeah, we're going to do the helmet red. I'm going to do these things that I have on the little clamps. The clamps. Disco. Chris, that is some bright red paint. Yeah, well, it's it's not that bright. I mean, it's it looks really bright in, in the airbrush, but like when it's sitting on top of this gray, it, it, dulls, it does the... Oh, frick, can't even speak anymore. It dulls down quite a bit, like you can see there. Like they're not the same value. It just looks really bright because it's glossy and wet. Whereas if I threw a gloss red of the same value, it, it would look closer to this because it's gloss, right? We've talked about the gloss thing many, many times. It's because this is uh, drying with a matte finish, 
and that's why it looks a little duller. And it's sitting on top of a gray. Next. Dry tip. Dry tip. Dry tip is your is your biggest enemy when airbrushing. That'll screw up so many things, believe it or not. Just the fact. I mean it and dry tip is unavoidable, right? But yeah. Uh, Thermicus, speaking of colors, does your tribe value one color over another? No, not at all. Disco, thank you for the uh, subscribing. Tier one, thank you very much. Much appreciated, sir. Or ma'am, I don't know. I don't know if Disco is a man or a woman, but it doesn't matter. Thank you. Uh, the, speaking of colors, does the tribe value one color over another? No, not at all. Now, realistically, uh, our color palette for a lot of things um, is really just more about the availability of color. So one of the colors that you'll see a lot of, especially, well, I mean, like I can only really talk about, you know, from the Ojibwe perspective, but uh, black, black is really predominant because it's, it's really easy to make black paint, right? Black pigments, because you just use ash, right? Carbon, carbon's black, right? So it gets used all over the time. And, um, you know, the next one is yellow, yellow, white, uh, and red, red's a big one. So those four colors, those are, you'll see those in a lot of native American, um, uh, designs and such is those four colors, because those four colors are part of the medicine wheel, which is, you know, something sacred, right? And so that's why you see that a lot, but in a lot of, uh, North American people, as we all share that um, that color palette, I suppose, is red, black, yellow, and white. But as far as like actual preferences are concerned, not really. I don't think it's it's not like you know, like blues and things like that. Yeah, those are fairly uncommon. But it's not like. Like in the European sensibilities of, you know, purple and blues being for royalty or anything like that. Well, we don't, we don't, um, we don't go in for royalty. So you're not going to really see that because we don't, we don't believe in royalties. We don't believe in birth makes one person exceptional over another. It's just not our thing. Again, though, I can only speak from a Ojibwe, Ojibwe perspective, so we don't believe in royalties. Slap some red in there just to deepen that up. It's gonna be white anyway, but yeah. So far, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty happy with where we're going so far. On this journey, we're having fun. Again, like I said, the uh, squad. This is the squad uh, shoulder pad. It's got the bear paw. Yeah, I think the field in behind it, I th so I think I'm going to leave the trim red 
but the field behind it is going to be colors. What colors? Pfft, couldn't tell you. Probably white and yellow. Maybe black and yellow. Black and red. Who knows? I'll figure it out. I haven't even worked out exactly how I want to, you know, denote squadrons within this hypothetical chapter of Space Marines, right? Again, a large inspiration. It really kind of comes from uh, the way Space Wolves lay out their... Um, their symbiolo symbology. Symbiology. Symbiology. It's a good word. Made it on pretty heavy there. Whew. Whew. If need be, we'll put another layer of red down. Hell, we could probably end up using the whole paint pot. <laughs> Not too worried about that. When this stuff dries, like it looks so nice and flat. Looks really nice. It's very nice. Very nice. Oh shit, we're getting pretty low. Let's see if we can correct this little boo-boo I made earlier. Boom, like it never happened. Pow, right in the kisser. Pow, right in the kisser. down <laughs> on that spot that way just painted oh my god okay disc mr disco and you're welcome great content thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you time we had holy camolis we've got 12 minutes left uh i think i'll end the stream once i'm done this layer of paint and then let it dry let it sit and we are gonna do a stream i think tomorrow so yeah but this week has been kind of goofy just because normally i like to do these streams on monday wednesdays and fridays but this week's kind of goofy just the way scheduling worked out and such so yeah i think we'll do a stream tomorrow though uh let's take care of this part before we move on Inside this collar here. For the most part, this collar will be black, so I'm not too worried about all that. Let's do the backpack. Again, I have no idea where it can hold onto this thing, really. I guess the point where it connects up is really the only safe spot to hang onto it.
Not gonna lie, I love the smell of Tamiya paints. <laughs> I am not gonna lie about that in the slightest. I love the smell. Sorry, my hands are getting a little shaky because it's getting close to, to lunchtime. It's actually not close, it's, it's past lunchtime. Yeah. Time to get some, some eating. that up uh, yep I did knocked along there at that edge son of a bitch oh well I have to give that a little bit to dry before I try and correct what happened there I see it skipped around on there and bumped that edge <laughs> saw that fucking did it again son of a bitch oh fuck oh these fucking stupid heavy parts yeah I fucked that all up <laughs> fucking heavy parts I swear to Christ stupid McFarlane can't you work with styrene plastic god damn it <laughs> the old man saw that coming yeah thanks 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 for telling me where were we on that one all right, we're going to open this arm up. Plus two, I'm getting a lot of paint on my fingers here. It's probably going to obscure some of the shit. Yeah. We've got to get in there. Do that arm. Do that arm there. Get those. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for warning me there, bud. I thought you had my back. <laughs> Where are you on that one, dipshit? get so far in yeah see you need you definitely need something to hang on to when working with so I'm spraying with my left hand at the moment and I get in there oh oh my god dry tip the reason why dry tip is such a pain in the ass and you have to deal with it all the time is because can throw off the direction of your paint it can it can force the paint to kind of clog and it also throws off the direction of which the paint flows that's why it's such a an issue to deal with all right this is mostly dry at the moment Let's see if we can get to some of this for this all before i end up dropping it again and fucking it all up See? Like it never happened. <laughs> uh, old man, or yeah, old man Logan. Drill a hole in the nub and pin it. And I was going to say, but if you figured it out, you'd disregard my voice anyway. <laughs> Low bridge next time. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, bud. Thanks. It's nice to know you got my back. Thanks, buddy. All right, I think we'll 
apply the bass tone to the bottom of the leg first, and then we'll hit the top of the leg. quite a bit of red today it's all right I got a I got a supplier of this paint nearby keeps me stocked actually there's a few there's quite a few places around me that sell this paint hell I even think a, a, one of the big box stores sells Tamaya paints just a couple drops Don't need much. Give it a quick little mix. The only reason for adding a little bit of thinner is just to thin the color down just a little bit, so it flows through the brush pretty easily. But you can probably pretty you can probably see this on camera that this paint flows through the airbrush without any thinners, just as well. It really doesn't really doesn't need it. And then I'm just rinsing the brush off in alcohol. Quick little rinse in the water. There we go. We're ready to continue. <laughs> Old man Logan, my motto is if you can't hold it, drill it. Yeah. If it bleeds, it can die. This will probably be filled in black when we get to it. There we go. Yeah, it should be fine. We'll just set it right there. Actually, no, we need to set it over here. Overspray. Overspray. Ah, uh, ba da ba ba. I ain't got time to bleed. Yeah, exactly. I ain't got time to bleed. You got time to duck? <laughs> Predator. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bud. Exactly. Do you see that they're going to do another Expendables movie? I was kind of surprised at that one. Stallone's getting pretty damn old. What's he gonna do? Take out the bad guys in a wheelchair? Like, what's his plan? That damn dry tip, dry tip. It's throwing off my, it's throwing off my spray.
Oh, we're almost there for the base coat. Almost. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Expendables 3, raiding the retirement cafeteria. Yeah, exactly. Or third for that matter, I know. It's just C. Have a good day. Time for me to get going. Later, man. Thanks for thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, look at that. See? Nick the damn pieces. God dang it. Not sure why I'm laying a lot of red down on these because they're probably going to be silver, so. Maybe copper. Again, I'm kind of digging the copper idea. Or bronze. Something deep and dark. Getting in there real deep like. Alright. I think that's okay. This piece is okay. Uh, let's lay a little bit more down over here. I think that's okay. All right, let's do the thighs. We ready for thighs? You know what? I'm going to change gloves just because I think the paint's rubbing off. I think the paint is just being a little too, too silly. Switching gloves, grabbing a clean pair. Pair, I'm not using a pair, just using one. <laughs> Disco, adios. Oh, you out of here too, Disco? Or are you saying later to just Z? Anyway, all right. You know what's a challenge? It's putting latex gloves on when your hand's sweaty. So any of you out there with a latex fetish, yeah, just be mindful. I'm sure any of you with a latex fetish has already figured that one out. <laughs> oh my god, my coffee's cold. Oh god. All right, let's do the thighs. Let's see how far we can get on these thighs. Bend that in a moment. Okay, it's one thigh. Grab another thigh. This leg feels wobbly. <laughs> the grim latex in Florida. No thanks. <laughs> Welcome, grim, buddy. Hopefully you're staying safe in Florida. Still got to do the inside of the knee and probably some touch-ups so I guess I'm mixing up another little batch of color <clears throat> not like I'm mixing it it's just pouring it in I make it sound like it's a really hard work <laughs> like we're like we're freaking splitting atoms here or something <laughs> Oh, we gotta add the pigments and the binder and the mediums. Throw in all sorts of additives. Then by the power of Zeus, we have paint. Not bloody likely. Do 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 do. off me 
brush. Nice and clean. Ah, alcohol. The cause and solution to all life's problems. <laughs> yeah, as many of you may or may not have guessed, I do a lot of Simpsons references. This is more just a touch up phase. Just kind of killing time till I feel like working on the inside of the legs. I'm just basically I'm just kind of shifting my angle and seeing where I need to apply more color. And that is it. Anywhere where I can kind of see some gray, I'm not too worried about that. It's just you know, OCD, just the OCD kicking in. Uh, I think that is okay. Sorry, I'm just looking at the shoulder pad and the helmet. I'm just seeing if they need a little bit more color. I think the shoulder pad with the symbol on it, the main chapter symbol on it, needs a little bit more red up on the high point. Torso? Does the torso need it? I don't think so. Looks okay to me for the most part. Oh, maybe on the back inside here. You gotta be careful your distancing. Especially if you have not turned your PSI down and you're kind of getting in close, you'll get a lot of overspray come back and it kind of comes cloudy. You just don't want to be breathing that shit in, is all. All right, I, mean, I might need both hands for this. I just need to bend the legs. I'll use the glove here. So, oh, excuse me. Disco, I'm almost done with this first Octaurus Orc. Six days now, labor of love. Yeah, well, again, I mean, like, you know, we all, we often feel like we should be working really fast at a fast pace when doing our miniatures, doing our hobby and stuff like that. And, like, for a vast majority of, of you out there, take your time, right? Enjoy the process, you know? Love the process, because this is this is your relaxed time, right? Like this is your time. And so like I don't know why people feel like, oh, I need to get it done. Or everybody's always talking about their pile of shame. And I, I I'm not sure I I'm completely on board with that idea either. Because yeah, you 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 spent the money on it, you know, but I mean you're not under any kind of deadline to get the damn thing finished. I mean, other than, you know, your own um, sanity as far as, you know, having too much boxes of models laying around. But otherwise, I mean, you know, you get it done when you get it done, right? Yeah, I'm just I'm just not 100% behind the idea of, of pile of shame. And, you know, other than, you know, spending money that you don't have. Right, putting all this stuff on your credit card, building up huge amounts of debt, when you know you don't really have the resources for that kind of thing. Sure, right? Then you got to kind of do some mental gymnastics to, to justify the expenditures to yourself. Which you know, for me personally, I mean, like, I have a lot of fun with these figures, and these McFarlane ones. I mean, yeah, they're they're cheaper than the Bandai one, and which kind of encourages me to buy more of them, right? You know. I kind of wish Bandai would just release these figures um, like they do the, their Star Wars line. And just, you know, I can assemble it, I can paint it and prime it and do whatever I want with the kit uh, right out of the box, right? 
I get the feeling though they're taking their cues from GW. Although like Bandai does do um, you know action figures and stuff like that, and you know they're sold as is. But I don't know. I just I really wish Bandai would just just release it like a box kit. You know, like they do with the rest of their Star Wars line. Like, you can buy all the Star Wars, and you can just snap them together and enjoy them as is, or you can paint them and glue them, and you know what I mean? Like, there's many ways to enjoy a Bandai kit, and I wish they did the Space Marines in that same philosophy, that you can just put it together and enjoy it as the action figure it is, or you can paint it and convert it, and you know what I mean? Like, you can do whatever you want with it, and even light it up, right? And put lights in it, and you know what I mean? Like... That's what I was hoping for when way back when when they said Bandai was going to do Space Marines. I was on board. I usually, anybody who pays attention to me for any length of time knows that I poo-poo on Space Marines all the time. But, yeah, I mean, like, you know, here I am painting the Space Marine, even though I talk about, I talk shit about Space Marines all the time. But, yeah. <coughs> God damn it. I, ugh. It's getting frustrating. end up laying a lot of layers down just because of my own damn stupid mistakes. Mainly because these goddamn parts are just so dang heavy. That, you know what I mean? Like it's no good there's no good solution for hanging on to these things when you're working on them. You kind of have to hold them into your hand so you can work with it, but that's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass. Anyway. <laughs> All right, I think we're done. Uh, let's see here. Let's spray a little more color in those joints. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't move the ankles. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, you can see a little bit of gray inside some of these spaces here. We're just gonna spray right in there. We're just gonna get in there nice aggressive like. Get some color in there. Put that paint right in there. Yeehaw! Color. <laughs> painting. <laughs> we make make this a segment. Aggressive painting. Yeehaw! Gonna get that paint right in there, real deep like. <laughs> if this was uh Painting like in Deliverance. Anybody, any of you old cats out there knows what Deliverance is. The movie. <laughs> Squeal for me. <laughs> Squeal. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Squeal. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I don't think I, I think I'm I think I'm getting high from the fumes. I think that's what's going on here. <laughs> All right, I think we're done with this initial base coat. Uh, we're gonna continue work tomorrow. We're gonna allow this to fully dry. I mean, it's dry within minutes, but you know, <laughs> I'm gonna use some of this uh, rinse alcohol to flush the brush. Basically, what I like to do is just throw a little bit of alcohol in there. I'll take my brush and uh, basically scrub the sides and help break down this paint as best I can. And there's a big glob of it just dry. Oh, maybe it's not so dry, but <laughs> anyway. I think you guys kind of get the point of how I like to clean up after using this stuff. And like I said, I'm, I'm a big stickler for proper cleanups and taking care of my tools because you know, these things aren't, aren't cheap. Right? I mean, if you have tons of resources to just throw away on this stuff willy-nilly, then by all means, carry on. You know, if you feel like you, you know, you can afford to replace your airbrushes, you know, whenever they get gunked up, no problem. Then by all means, ca carry on. For me personally, this shit's expensive. And, you know, even though I, this is uh, a business for me, it's still expensive. I mean, I, I'm not, it's not like I'm taking in millions and millions of dollars in funds that I can afford to just, you know, throw this shit away. For God's sakes, man. This shit's expensive.
So basically all I do is I just take that little thing, I pour it into my rinse cup as carefully as I can because I don't want it splashing everywhere. And all I'm doing is I'm just using the remainder of that rinse alcohol just to you know help with the flushing process really. That's all. And I use the brush just to help kind of scrub the sides so that I can, you know, make sure that the bowl's nice and clean for next time. For next time. The one thing I will say though, that when using like uh, more solvent based uh, paints and stuff like that, especially in the airbrush, you have to use, you know, pretty aggressive chemicals to like clean. And that actually helps to keep the airbrush pretty darn clean and, and good looking. <laughs> Not like good looking like oh hey good looking but i mean like you know like it looks good nice and clean you know it looks like it's ready for duty 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 oh shit i did that on my clothes damn it anyway grab paper towel we'll use the same one we were using earlier it's all gunked up it's okay we'll chuck it in a minute so i'm just gonna wipe the bowl again we've got a majority of the paint out you can see there See a little bit on the bottom. I think that's just the residual alcohol. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you can see already we're mostly clean. It's a little bit of paint on the tip. We'll take care of that in a moment. But I am going to uh, put it in the holder for a sec. So I'm going to take off this glove. Just there we go. Wapa. Wapa. Uh, disco at way the brush. Absolutely. I have a pile of opportunities. Yeah, exactly, right? I mean, like, yeah, if you're sitting on a big pile of models and stuff like that, and, you know, this is just your hobby time, and you're just looking to relax, yeah, I mean, like, it's not a pile of shame. You're going to get to it at some point. And even if you don't, you know, you can always purge and recoup some costs or put that, you know, the money that you would have, you know, uh, spent on those products in five years, ten years down the line. You're like, I'm never going to get to this, and I don't really care about it anymore because, again... You know, it's okay to not care about this stuff because it's just stuff. It's just toys. It's just models. It's not like they're family heirlooms. Um, you know, it's not even like you're going to get a big return on it if you sell it secondhand to anybody because nobody wants to pay full price for this stuff to begin with. You know what I mean? Like an Imperial Land Raider in, in Warhammer 40K. You know, it's like, a, what, it's a $80 kit now? If you sold it five years down the line... Do you think you're going to get 80 bucks or even within the uh, with inflation, it's going to cost like 100 bucks? You think you're going to get that back? No. It's not like these things are huge collector's items. People, nobody wants to spend the money, and especially because now 3D printing is becoming more and more available, the cost just keeps coming down. Really, these, these things are not, uh, they don't appreciate in value. They depreciate in value. Anyway. <laughs> Enough ranting from me. <laughs> I'm getting all worked up here. I'm, I'm getting angry. I'm getting angry. <laughs> so all I say is I don't believe in, uh, you know, pile of shame. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. It's not a thing. You know? Um, it's only a thing if, if you think that this is going to appreciate in value. And, you know, no. The, the real value of this, of all of this is your own sanity that's the real value is you getting down to sit down and enjoy some miniature painting relaxing you know listen to some music podcast movies whatever it is right and just relaxing that's where the value is that is the value is you get to relax because you you know you work school family job whatever it is right stressful real life is stressful and you get like an hour or two a week to sit down and enjoy yourself. That's what this is all about. <clears throat> Social media would have you believing that. Oh no no you got to get you got to get projects done. You got to get this stuff done. You got you know if you bought you know Curse City that's got to get done tomorrow, so you can play and play and play and play. No, it's your hobby. Enjoy it how you want. Okay, I'm just going to take some of this alcohol. I'm just going to pour a little bit in. This is mostly clean. You see there, it's still a little murky. That's because I was farting around with it. I'm going to take my clean-ish brush. 
mix it around. I'm actually going to move the trigger back a bit because some of the paint does accrue up into the nozzle. And so this is just, oops, shit. Just <laughs> I spritzed a little alcohol out, sprayed all, all my, across my desk here. Just going to let some of that alcohol sit on the needle and in the, in the nozzle, just like we do with the Windex. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. Again, I try and do a very thorough clean when using more solvent-based type paints, just because it causes huge problems down the line. Gum up your brush, then you got to replace your brush. Oh, man. And these brushes are not cheap. They're not cheap. But, I mean, if you take care of them, like I said earlier in the, in the stream today, I've had this brush for, I think, eight or nine years. And as long as you take care of it, you see how murky the, the rinse alcohol is in there? As long as you take care of it, man, it'll last you a long time. Just like your regular paintbrushes. Take care of your regular paintbrushes. They'll last you a long time. There is a shelf life, especially with how much painting you do. But for a lot of you who, you know, only get to sit down once a week, once a month, you know, you got to take care of your tools. Otherwise, yeah, you, next time you sit down to, to do some painting or hobbying, whatever, and your tools are all messed up and gummed up and not working and you'll be pissed off and you're like, oh, these brushes are garbage because they're... Every time I go to sit down and paint and come back a month later, they don't work. Well, yeah, you weren't taking care of them, man. You know, again, it's about, you know, kind of taking some personal responsibility. Son of a bitch. Speaking of personal responsibility, overspray. Look at this gun, this blaster through this Titan's got some freaking overspray on it. God dang it. It's not prime, though. It's just bare plastic, but anyway. God damn it. Overspray. God damn overspray. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Kim, yeah, I used to, uh, I used that a lot. A pile of opportunity, yeah, exactly, yeah. Start thinking of it as, as opportunities, not as negatives. Think of it as positives, right? <laughs> Disco, that movie gave me nightmares as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Wee, wee, wee. Uh, Kim, I put the eyed for holding the pieces in Discord for you. Okay. Disco, what's up? Yeah. Kim, I'm hoping to keep the airbrushes I have forever. Don't see uh, what could go so wrong that it's not just to change out the part. No. I mean, if anything, the needle. The needle, I, I would say, is probably the first thing that goes on an airbrush. Just because you accidentally ding it or whatever. Uh, usually that's what kills the needle, is uh, accidentally dinging it. Um, possibly seals. Maybe the nozzle. Like I said, uh, when I got this uh, a few years in... Uh, somehow I screwed up the thread or something like that because I was getting an air leak through the thread but then I just used some um, um, uh, gasket tape and just put it once around screwed it back on, seals it and yeah, it's plumber's tape, right? I think it's typically gets called plumber's tape or it's basically like um, it's like a, uh, a silicone thin, thin, thin tape and you just wrap it around the threads of a pipe and you screw it on and it provides a gasket seal uh, uh, around it it's good stuff highly recommend it it should be in your toolbox especially for all of you out there who do airbrushing you should have some of that tape handy because it comes in handy when you got to redo these threads and provide seals on these things because again any leak i mean like just in this setup alone like you can get leaks up in the threads near the cup the seal where the needle meets into the main body down here where there's a few points where you can get loose seals i have quick connects on mine so that I can, you know, just quickly change the brushes I have. I often have these little adapters on the brush so I can just quickly change out, right? Anyway, enough tool talk. <laughs> I have to do that as another show. Tool talk. Oh, shit, dropped my brush. Oh, spilling alcohol. Oh, all right. But yeah, like I said, the, this my cleaning process for my airbrushes, yeah, it takes a little while. Now, I have not done a very thorough clean on my brushes um, of like putting them through um, ultrasonic cleaner. I have not done that in, in ages. Mainly because I just haven't really felt it necessary. What happened to that paper towel I had? Did I chuck that? I didn't chuck that, did I? Why would I chuck that? I thought I had another paper towel. Lots of paper towels. You always want to make sure you have paper towels with you. Or something to wipe up your paint. 
but anyway. And yeah. Bar. Oh, excuse me. I don't know where that burp came from. I haven't had anything to drink or eat. All right. So, alcohol. That the bowl, mostly clean. I'm gonna give it a quick little spritz of Windex, just to make sure. Again, like I said, like I'm, I like to be very thorough in my cleaning. Taking care of your tools is very important. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Somehow it was over here. Damn it! Now I got two sheets going. Son of a, two sheets and a breeze. Anyway, or no? How's that thing go? That expression go? Two sheets to the wind. Anyway. I'm talking on my ass at this point. I do a lot of, and for anybody who doesn't tune into me very often, yeah, I I talk out of my ass a lot. <laughs> I'm a consummate ass talker. <laughs> the ass whisperer. <laughs> so there he goes. That's the, that's the guy, eh? Oh yeah, yeah, that's the guy. It's, he's the ass whisperer. It sounds more like Asperger's, but Ass Whisperer. <laughs> anyway, I'm just taking a bit of alcohol. I'm just wiping the outside just because my OCD is kicking in. And so I'm just wiping down the brush and the, the bowl. <laughs> um, I'm in full OCD mode at the moment. So I'm just cleaning the outside. <laughs> it's not necessary, really, but, you know. Foibles foibles people it's all about the foibles <laughs> all right i think we're good oh somebody's joining in in the discord who's joining me oh hail <laughs> I'm, I'm almost done bud what's happening good talk oh am i muted fuck i think i'm still muted <laughs> Uh, where am I here? Hail, what's happening, buddy? Uh, not too much. Oh, you know what? Here, let me change this. I forgot to do this earlier. Well. There we go. There we go. Should be able to hear him nice and clear now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting here cleaning my brush, talking to the camera. You're what? I'm just sitting here cleaning my brush, talking to the camera. I don't know. I don't know if you're watching the stream or not, but. Yeah. Is this stream on? Yeah, I'm still streaming. Yeah. Yeah, I've just been talking crap. I got uh, all the parts to this McFarlane Marine primed and base coated. But we're... Are you I'm, not on, must not be on Twitch? I'm not on Twitch? You're not showing us on the front door. Really? I'm pretty sure I'm on Twitch. <laughs> Have I been talking to myself the entire time? <laughs> no, it says I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh, it's because I have too many... Okay, they redid the sidebar. There's too many people streaming right now. <laughs> That's some first world problems there for you, huh? Ah, There's too many people streaming right now. It's too many. It's too many streamers. It's too many options. All right. I think this brush is not going to get any cleaner than that. I've rinsed this with alcohol so many times. There we go. All right. So, what's happening, buddy? Uh, I got kill team last night, and I just cracked it open. Oh, <laughs> as, as we can hear, holy man. <laughs> Sounds like Christmas time at, at, at your house. Oh. <laughs> Fucking big. Big box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's tons of stuff in that, eh? Are you excited? Are you excited for the orcs, or are you excited for the uh, Death Guard, or Death Corps? Would it be weird to say I was more excited for the terrain? <laughs> really? No, that's it's not, it's not See, wrong. Okay, so the orcs, orc commanders, cool. Um, I am not a big fan. Okay, so I like the whole Death Horde of Priest, like, you know, World War One vibe. Yep. I am not a fan of the plastic one. Nothing to do with the plastic itself, it's just the sculpt. Just looks like crap to you? Uh, no, they, like, the gas masks and stuff were a little bit different. They just feel more, I don't know, bug eye -y. 
if that makes any sense. Like, they're, the lenses on their masks do more, like, bug eyes now. Gotcha. See, you're not on board with the whole thing, the current iteration of them. Yeah. Gotcha. But, I mean, technically it is a good kit. Technically. You are technically correct, sir. Just the best kind my, of correct. My, my preferences uh, on aesthetics. The orc kit, on the other hand, uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Disco. Golden age of streaming for the hobby. Yeah, it's kind of, it is kind of a golden age, right? I mean, how can we complain? We, we get animated shows now of Warhammer 40,000, uh, painting videos all over the place, streamers streaming all the time, all over the world. Like, even for somebody new to this hobby, like, this is a really good time, whether people realize it or not, that, you know. Yeah, well, you can get into the hobby and immediately start streaming, because that's, <coughs> that's what a lot of streamers have done. True. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are some streamers who have, uh, who have big communities who, you know, started in video gaming or D and D or whatever. Right. And then cross over into this and yeah, yeah, it is very interesting. But the, uh, the orc commando sprue, pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to play kill team. I really literally just bought it for the terrain and then the minis. Oh yeah? yeah. I'm moving over here a bit. Let's go over here. Oh. I'm a bit of a terrain holic right now. A terrain oholic. You are holic for terrain. <laughs> I've just been like the last couple of months. I've just been buying up terrain kits. Ah, there we go. Let me adjust this. Get a little bit more light happening. Oh, wait, Fritz. There we go. The only thing is bring the mic in nice and close. Most kits and their instruction sheet tells you, gives you like a little like simplified data sheet 40k stuff. The commandos and creeps in the kill team box do not. And then if you look at at least the battle scribe with the updated rules from the core codex on uh, what was it? The Beast Boys um, special box came out. Uh, half Half of the weapon options on the commando sprue you can't take in 40k. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to change with the new new codex that comes out like a couple weeks from now, but. Oh, is the new codex coming out? Well, it's the codex that was in the Beast, uh, the Beast Boys box. I forget what they The Beast Snaggas? Yeah. That name still cracks me up. Beast Snaggas. Because battle scribe is threat. It could be not Because um, in a lot of Native com uh, Native American communities, snag means uh, humping, fucking, <laughs> right? So, beast snag is they're snagging their beasts. Of course, a, a, there is a joke there, uh, even within the context of of you know the joke being within Native American communities. Because you know a beast snagger, well, you can call him. Uh, you know, he's the one that picks up all the. Um, the less attractive ones. <laughs> the beasts, as it were. <laughs> That's awful, I know. But, you know, a lot of the boys can be kind of awful. So I'm curious if Battlescribe just hasn't updated correctly their, you know, entries. Because that does happen if Battlescribe. Yeah, I don't use Battlescribe. Um, especially because, well, now I've, I've got um, uh, the Warhammer Plus. And yeah. the army builder, um, I'm pretty sure, is offered with that. I want. I'm getting it on Warhammer Plus. I just uh, my phone's a piece of crap. So I have to get a new phone. Yeah. You know what's pissing me off? Now, anybody out? This goes for anybody out there. Uh, I have the Warhammer Plus. I have an iPhone, but I watch. I want to watch it on my TV, but we have an Xbox. And the Xbox pretty much is the only device that you know runs to the TV. It's a smart TV, but. Uh, just the way my home entertainment system works is everything is just pipes through the uh, Xbox to the receiver to the TV kind of thing, right? And the app itself on the phone, like with YouTube, if you if you ever transferred uh, your screen to the TV, it has that little symbol up in the up uh, in the upper corner. Yeah, yeah. And the Warhammer app, I think, has it, but it but it doesn't do it. 
it says it can't find it and i'm 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 at a loss i unless of course maybe it's an update within the app which is of which i assume it, it is could, it could be something broken in the app broken or just not addressed oh yeah well, because I mean, like, who knows, like, how how long they've been actually working on this app? Because I mean, they could have announced it, and then they said, "Yo, oh, shit, now we need a development team to make it, right?" Or it's it is something that they've been working on. It just you know hasn't you know. Yeah, I don't know. Like so, and I I've kind of looked around, and I haven't seen anything as far as like addressing that because I'd like to be able to watch it on my TV because, you know, I mean, watching on my computer screen is fine, but. I'd rather watch it on my TV because, you know, that's kind of the place for this kind of entertainment yeah. is on your TV, right? Disco says the Warhammer TV app uh, will not smart cast correctly. Yeah, I know. And I, uh, uh, it's annoying. And like, and also like the Xbox is like a mobile device. It shows up as a mobile device and um, you can't find the Warhammer app in the Xbox store, which is another oversight. Like, like what the fuck you know i just want to watch cartoons on my tv for god's sakes what is wrong with them <laughs> why can't they accommodate me and my childish needs <laughs> i just want to watch space marines on my screen yeah because like we watch youtube and stuff like that on the tv and everything like that and you know it's pretty normal uh, Disco, it's not in PS Plus Store, not in Vizio Smart TV apps either. Yeah, see, like, I don't understand because, I mean, how do you how do you have it in Apple's iOS, you know, offerings on the App Store and Android? How do you have it there on those two major platforms for all this shit, but it's not on all these other things? Like, I don't understand how something could be in the App Store, but not available on other Apple shit. And I don't understand how it can be an Android store do, and not be on Xbox. I do remember when they said, like, concerning to which stores it was going to be, app, or app stores it was going to be on, they did, I do remember them saying, like, more coming soon or something to that effect. So I wonder maybe if it's, like, an approval process. Something vibrating on the table here. Is that the fan doing that? Jesus. But, yeah. I don't know. It's annoying. I'm, and of course, you know, I'm being childish, of course, but damn it, I want to watch my cartoons on a big screen TV, for God's sakes, you know? First world problem. So this is a first world hobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's it, right? This is a first world problem. And yeah, this is a first hobby. Hobbies in general are a first world problem. Like yeah. hobbies, that's a first world thing. Because everybody else, you know, who, you know, has no downtime, they don't have hobbies. They just go to work live their lives you know it's constant you know life right hobbies are a luxury and yeah this is a luxury so we, we basically all have luxurious lives so we should really stop and reflect and you know consider that yeah complaining about all this shit really is pff, minor <laughs> And now we go back to complaining. <laughs> but let's go back to complaining, because complaining's fun. Complaining's fun. <laughs> <laughs> complaining about childish shit is fun. <laughs> Disco well said, oh well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, it's it's just, it's all about perspective, right? It's all about perspective. Oh, man. But anyway. So how you been? Oh, good. Just got off work. Got home. And I saw you were in chat. <laughs> yeah, still streaming. Right now, I'm planning out uh, Adepticon project because even though Adepticon is in March, we are now in September. Yep. No, March is going to creep up on us really fast. Mm. So, anywho. I think I'm going to end her there because I need to get some lunch. Old Man Logan, speaking of complaining, did you end up ordering that glossy or grossly overpriced Bandai Space Ring Captain? Yes, I'm still bitter. <laughs> no, actually I didn't. Um, I him and hawed uh, the first couple days uh, and then I got the notification that, you know, time was, you know, running short and I was like, no, I don't need it. Um, 
I'm sure if I, I'll, I'll probably get a craving for it. Something cool will come out. But I don't know. They did not wow me with that preview image of it. Um, the chain, the, the yeah, that that prototype, yeah. The now I realize that you could see the 3D print lines on it. That doesn't bother me because I know that it'll be cast in styrene and it'll be perfectly smooth. I know that. I'm not worried about that. They pissed me off because that storm bolter, the uh, belt feed for the gun, just looked like absolute shit. And yeah, it was like, like, like Chewbacca's belt, like that. Instead of like maybe doing like flexible plastic or like rubber or something. Well, ta- it's Tamia. I mean, like, or not Tamia. It's Bandai. I mean, like, they do tons of kits. They do World War II kits. Like, it'd be easy for them to just mock up, you know, a tank tread that would have looked better than that, right? They could have just mocked up tank treads and just. Rubber. You know, yeah, and and it'd just be rubber, and it's Bandai because they offer. Well, they don't make, they don't sell this so that everybody can make it. They sell it as a big action figure, which is again another like pisses me off. Like, just give us it, give us these Space Marines as a kit in bare plastic, even colorless plastic or whatever, so that we can build it and paint it and do it ourselves. You know, and and it would be way cheaper. Like all their Star Wars kits are very 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 affordable they're less than 30 dollars each and i'll bet you these bandai marines they could offer it at that same price i have a feeling that the 40k stuff being part of bandai's action figure line i feel like that might have been a gw decision yes that that feels like a very gw decision and i think that's a huge mistake i still think as as speaking as a consumer and uh, somebody who has been a long time fan of this stuff, and yet I shit on Space Marines all the time, I want a whole bunch of these Bandai Marines. The Bandai Marines are way better than these McFarlane ones. For many reasons. And the only reason that these McFarlane ones are taken off is because of the price. You know? Like, these action figures, man, you can kill somebody with these McFarlane uh, Marines. There's so much damn plastic. Well, is it plastic or is it a resin? Because it feels... It's not PVC, but it's a plastic stuff. Yeah, it's a resin. I mean, like, I realize that resin is plastic, but, you know, it's... They're just so damn heavy. I mean, like, these... Like, I'm playing with the Space Marine right now, and right out of the box, it is super ass heavy. The Sister of Battle... She was, had some weight to her, but, you know, she, it's not as heavy as a Space Marine. The Bandai Marine, both, I have two Bandai Marines, they don't even weigh as heavy as that damn Sister of Battle. Because they're styrene plastic. Yeah, the, um, McFarlane does use, like, a res, like, a more, I guess, resiny resin, like, what we would think of resin for their, um, like, their sports, their, their, their stationary figures, like, their statues. Right. But this, is, um, this stuff is more like a PV, like, like what War Machine plastic. I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, and it, it, it's it's got like these Bandai or um, these McFarland Marines, they're um, they're very flexible. The Sister Battle, tons of flex in a lot of the parts. Um, but the only draw to these McFarland Marines is the price. That's the only reason. Oh, and the fact that they're offering um, alternates as well because you got Sifter. Yeah, you, you, more variety because you got. Um, Necron, you got different Space Marines, and you got the Sister of Battle. You know. Which, you know, they're pumping out these variations much more quickly than Bandai. But Bandai is still the better product, in my opinion, because uh, it's got way more posability, it's lighter, and, you know, the only only other thing, too, is uh, taking it apart. It's not exactly easy taking apart the Bandai Marine. Whereas this McFarlane stuff... You know, I I think I did break the leg, taking the legs off this marine. I I, I cracked well, the connector. Um, play with them and well, not pose them, and take pictures of them and sit on my shelf. Yeah, but I'm not gonna be yeah. I'm not playing games with them or anything like that. But the main reason why, um, like I want Bandai to do these marines properly and give us them in kits. So we can assemble them and do them up however we want. Is because I would love, love, absolutely love to do a big, huge diorama of all the Marines and emulate like the Rogue Trader cover or like the the current iteration of that uh, homage to that 
uh, Rogue Trader cover where all the Marine Crimson Fists are all in a big pile and they're all fighting desperately, right? I would love to do a diorama of that, but in the scale of all of these Marines. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And I mean, like looking at the artwork right now, because I have the poster on my wall, and that's like, I'd, I'd need at least, uh, I don't know, 30? <laughs> 30 to do a good yeah. interpretation of it. Yeah. But yeah. They're not as poseable. And that, and can you imagine 30 McFarlane Marines? My God, I'd, I'd need a forklift to move that piece around. <laughs> I'd need a forklift. That thing would be a metric ton. It'd be, it'd be heavier. It'd be like carrying a dead body around, like 200 and some pounds. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's, that's, that's not a, a, not a good option. I almost walked past him, but for me, it was, uh, he's an ultramarine. Oh, that, I'm not going to like shit on the ultramarines, but if it was like a white star or a blood angel, I probably would have like pulled the trigger. Yeah, sure. I mean, like you can repaint it. I mean, it's it's not a big deal. I could, but would that ever get repainted? Yeah. Well, I'm. I plan. I still plan on doing mine. <laughs> I still plan on doing mine. It's just I have not found any good guides for disassembly of the Bandai Marines. Whereas you know the McFarlane ones are pretty easy, right? And it is a little bit more forgivable taking them taking apart the McFarlane Marine. But it put it back together. I mean, like it's just like holy man, you got to apply a lot of force to put it back together. Yeah. Uh, old man Logan, I think I saw what the original Marines were going to do for the secondary market and decided they wanted a piece of that pie. Old man, I love the McFarland stuff. Yeah, I mean the McFarland stuff is fine, but again, it's just it, the weight and the lack of posability and the flex, and also to like the texture on these McFarlane Marines, like they sculpted in this artificial texture all over it. Whereas the Bandai ones, it's just straight up plastic. There's no art. There's no, you know, uh, sculpted damage. Yeah. The battle damage scratches and stuff like that. Like what if I want a pristine looking Marine? I can't do that with McFarlane because he's got all these, uh, nicks and scratches all over it. Mind you, any proper space Marine doesn't really have, you know, perfect pristine armor, but I'm just saying, I want to, I wanted the choice. They've already made that choice of where battle damage is going to be. So in that regard, everybody's Marines are going to look the fucking same, right? So, I don't like that. I like a, I like a blank canvas rather than pre-described things to me. You know what I mean? Which is why I want these Bandai Marines to be sold as kits. God damn it. Games Workshop, make the damn right choice. I did find a new model on uh, Marketing. What's that? Moonstone. Not familiar with that. Post it in Discord. Yeah, I'll post it in Discord. Uh, Kim, if the Bandai was the price of the McFarlane Marines, uh, I would have all the chapters in full squads of Space Wolves. Yeah, exactly, right? I mean, like, because the Bandai Marine is a better action figure. Um, but it's just like, because I think the Bandai Marine is under actually their SH Spirits line, I think is what it is. Uh, Bandai, they have two Bandai Spirits, I think it's called, right? And yeah, they have two action figure lines, and but I think this is the Spirits one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these Bandai Marines are under their Spirits, and I, I, I don't know why they went with this decision. They should have done it like a plastic kit, like the Star Wars plastic kits, and they have the 112 scale because I have like C3PO and I have the droids. Those are the only ones I've been meaning to pick up Stormtroopers and stuff. Um, because they're 112 and that's the same scale as these space marines ish and um, spirits line is the bigger one it has like Kamashi nations or something like yeah it's I, I yeah but I mean like because that's why these things cost so damn much because somebody they have to pay somebody to assemble these and put in these initial paints because there is artificial shadows and such on the Bandai marines and slap the decals on you know what i mean like it's not a completely automated process you can tell that it's a hand it's a, it's somebody putting in these shadows and such into these figures um i posted the uh the stuff i was talking about okay but yeah um i they they bandai 
for whatever reason, they should have done it as a kit rather than giving us the assembled figure. Because everybody, because like a vast majority of the community who's going to buy these things, they're all it's largely do it yourself. So I don't understand why they even thought this was a good idea. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'd like to know who's in charge of this shit. Like, I mean, for all I know, it could have been a Bondi decision. But it could be. be easier for us, but my gut feeling feels like it was a GW decision. Me too. I, I get that feeling as well that it, this was a GW Especially decision. since now they started putting pre-orders up when they started. Yeah, yeah. It's, it feels like that antiquated um, exclusivity of items like they used to be really all about, right? You know, it was everything, all these exclusives and stuff. And that those days are gone. Nobody wants that, right? Everybody wants their opportunity to own these things. And making them exclusives or limited runs, nobody's on board for that. Everybody wants it. And I don't understand why they would make these decisions like that to make these exclusives because they, they, they're they losing ground in that regard because people are just going to look elsewhere to fill that niche, right? And 3D printing is is one of those things that's going to is the gateway to that um, people wanting to fill that niche, right? Because guaranteed, I'm sure that it's out there that you can uh, 3D print these figures, these these McFarlane Bandai Marines. I'm sure it's out there that you can print it yourself. There are, they're not like exact one to ones, but there are not Space Marines, Space Marines out there. Yeah, and I'm sure. Together, 3D print. You know, you have to be kind of careful putting it together, but sure. I, I I'm I'm just speculating, but I'm 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 sure it's already out there. It's already in the wild. Uh, old man Logan, I agree though. An unassembled kit would have been much preferred. Definitely. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm still. It still chaps my ass. I mean, these Bandai Marines have been uh, available now for what, like two years almost, two years around. And you know, I still love them. I didn't pick up the Salamander. I didn't pick up the White Scar because there was. I didn't care for the gun on the Salamander, and I. The White Scar was just the ultimate. Ultra- yeah, it was just the. It was just the Ultimate, just cast in white plastic, and that's that's lame. Give us the goddamn kit. Let us assemble these fucking marines ourselves, you know? That, there was the um, Imperial Fist, but he was pretty much the standard guy, except he had the grenade launcher thing on it. Yeah, that, that was the only reason I bought him, is because I liked his gun. You know, I have I have the Imperial Fist, I have the Ultramarine. I also swapped out their heads. Um, I have uh, Henry Cavill on my Ultramarine, and I have the Rock yeah. uh, as my... Um, as my uh, Imperial Fist for now, but I, my my goal is to do them both as Crimson Fists. That's the goal. Kim, hundred bucks kit with gray unbuilt Bandai Marine. That's the dream. Yeah, I only got the fist one. Yeah, um, yeah. If they sold the the Bandai Space Marine as a kit, guaranteed it would only be like probably thirty forty dollars to buy. And that would that makes it very comparable to um, I mean thirty forty I'm t- when I say thirty forty I mean like I'm talking Canadian so in U S that knock a boat you know thirty uh, percent off that. Imagine they priced it like their uh, high grade Gundam kit, which is about like twenty to thirty dollars US. Yeah, well I I haven't had a look, but I mean like because I only pay like thirty bucks for my Bandai Star Wars stuff, and there's a few kits I don't have that I want, like the B wing. I want the B wing, man. But anyway. Um, but they're cheap. Like they're only 30 bucks. I only spent like 30 bucks on these kits each and they're fantastic kits. You can just slap them together and enjoy it on your shelf. Cause they're already cast in all the plastic parts that, you know, you want, or you can glue them and prime them and paint them, light them up. And you know what I mean? Like all these things, like, uh, they're, they're, they're modeling kits, you know? That happen to be action figures because, like C3PO, you can assemble them like a model kit, and you can do all sorts of stuff with them, or you can just slap them together and use them like an action figure. Because they're, they're, they're posable as well. Yeah, because they also have like the Dragon Ball Z ones, where mm-hmm. it's like the figures, but they're models. You can flip them together. Right. Yeah. Old man Logan, I paid under thirty dollars US for the one twelve Bandai Boba Fett. 
So that sounds about right for the Space Marine, even with the licensing. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, I can't see, though, if Bandai was to make Space Marines as a kit that you can fully assemble and get that proper thing, um, you know, I don't see why you can't, you can't get it. <laughs> Fatal Terminus, that's my son. Nice, nice, uh, nice emotes there, bud. <laughs> that's my boy, Fatal Terminus. God damn it, wait. Better not eat my lunch. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like thirty bucks for you know, the Space Marines. I would, I'd pay that any any day of the week. I'd probably buy boxes and boxes of them. You know, it's just so that I can have, you know, a full squad. That would just be awesome. Hell, imagine even imagine even playing a game with one twelve scale figures. Just like a skirmish, like doing it like Kill Team, right? Play play a game of Kill Team with the 112 scale. Wouldn't that be fun? It it feel a little childish. It feel like we're playing with our Barbies and our you know our uh, you know our GI Joes. But I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's you'd have to play on a six by six table for that. Remind me of like those old stop motion um, scenes in movies, like uh, just that art style. Moonstone. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh, I like the little guy in the boat, El Capitano. <laughs> yeah, oh, like little gobbos called, and stuff. Um, dog. Yeah, there's goblins, there's humans, there's gnomes. I just posted the goblin one because that's the page I had open. Um, <laughs> there is a uh, dog, the flatulent. And he's just a goblin riding a pug. <laughs> That's funny. Alrighty. Uh, shit. Man, we went 57 minutes OT. I think I'm going to end her there because I'm going to go grab some lunch. I'm hungry as hungry. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. We got some work done. We got, we got the priming done. We got the base coating started. Um, even though I dropped the backpack a couple times and knocked the fucking paint off. <laughs> well, it was still wet, but now it's, it's, it's all fine now. I don't even see it. The were, flat red. Were you going to sculpt feathers or did you? Oh decide? yeah. So, uh, uh, Kim had posted in discord about, um, using like a silicone mold and he showed me, um, you know, some companies that, um, who, um, you know, produce these silicone molds for feathers. And they sound about the right scale. And I found somebody on Amazon uh, who sells uh, a few different silicone molds. One is what Kim had pointed to, and there's a couple others. So I'm going to give them a try. I have some uh, two-part resin that I can use, cast it, and just throw it into the mold. They're for more of, like, uh, baking, like doing the uh, yeah. cakes and stuff like that. But it's a silicone mold, so it should hold up. Shove, like, green stuff in your button. Yeah, I mean, the green stuff... I don't know. Green stuff could work. But I, th I think two-part resin, especially at how uh, thick the, the parts are, the resin heat should not distort the silicone at all at, at the levels of which we're, we're talking about here because they're really not that big. But yeah, I, I sculpted, I tried to sculpt feathers twice and it just, uh, just pissed me off and just wasn't happening. And so, yeah, and Kim had mentioned, yeah, why not casting? And, and yeah, okay, if I could find some, you know, feathers that would be kind of appropriate for this 112 scale, I'm okay if they're not, you know, big enough or too big, but hopefully they're big enough. I don't know. We'll find out. They should show up tomorrow. I already ordered them. Uh, the mold should show up. So, yeah, I might do it on in stream. I might do it off. I don't know. Either way. Uh, I, but if it shows up tomorrow, I mean, we'll be into painting this tomorrow. Hopefully we can get to some shading. I think we're going to do some shading on this. Uh, yeah, it's probably just going to mostly be shading because we'll be fairly careful as we do it. I'm not 100% sure how we're going to go about the shading. If I'm just going to use a brown or if I'm going to use a transparent brown like I did on the sister. But yeah. Uh... Kim, some of the molds are a bit off. Depends on the quality. It's soft. You might push the mold when you put in the green stuff. Yeah, that's why I'm, I want to do it in resin. 
because the resin goes in very liquidy and doesn't distort and of course it, it cures within like 10 minutes so yeah but yeah that's the plan that's the plan any last words there hale nope you sure now's your time uh, i hope that that's like on 2022 just to get canceled because it's the way thing keeps me going right now yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> hopefully yeah i don't know again with this whole bullshit going on like i don't know it's hard to say. I know I, I I was I was when they dropped it and they said, Yeah, we're we're doing it and I completely forgot to book my hotel room and I'm sure there's probably no availability right now, but yeah. Uh, the Renaissance no, the highest maybe. Yeah. And then is the it, other that, hotels, yeah. Now when they're talking about the highest, is that the one that's across the way? Yeah, it's like a five minute drive. Not even. It's like it's a walk, isn't it? Like because I I'm pretty sure I stayed there last time we went to Adepticon. I was staying at the Hyatt. It is. They said it's less than like a mile or something. Yeah. Okay. Then that that that's where I stayed last time. It's not bad. It's, rooms are clean. And if there's plenty of people around, that means that you know we can we can party until the. Well, that is also the second venue. So. Right. Yeah. Because all the historicals are going to be there and everything, right? Historicals and Matt said small stuff. What small stuff? I don't know. I don't know if you've talked to him about uh, having the meetup or not as an official event. Yeah, well, yeah, I need to I need to coordinate with him. He's usually my point man on this in this regards, so I have to I have to give him a call or message, not call. You know what I mean. All right, I'm I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> getting delirious. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 da dun 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 I'm seeing how long I can go with that. 